Hey, car shoppers, car gurus here with your word of the day. Strict. It's not a crowd favorite, but wouldn't it be nice if there was a car shopping site so strict it only said cars were great deals if they were actually great deals based on details like mileage and accident history? There is! Visit cargurus.com and find a deal that's 100% certifiably great. Seriously. Don't make us say it twice. Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. Look at us back together again, right? It's me with a microphone, you with your earbuds, the four of us just sitting here staring at one another across the table like Batman and the Joker in an interrogation room, just trying to figure out what they're going to do as Batman sits there and beats him up just before the Joker tells him that he's going to kill either his friend or his girlfriend, and Batman has to choose which one of them to save, and it turns out for some ridiculous reason Batman chooses to save the girlfriend, even though she's not his girlfriend anymore, she's actually fucking the friend that the Joker's going to kill. So let me ask you this, is his plan to save the girlfriend and hope that his, for the friend Harvey Dent dies so then he can have the girl all to himself again, even though she looks like a toe? Let me ask you that. Is that what you're thinking? Why does Batman have that taste in ladies? Nothing against Maggie Gyllenhaal. I'm sure she's lovely. Uh, She'd look terrific in The Handmaid's Tale with a head covering of some sort. (laughs) I'm sorry. That made me laugh. Hi. Uh, All right. Let's just cut to the fucking chase here. It's been three weeks and and that doesn't make any sense at all. Right. It doesn't. and, And you're thinking to yourself, where have you been, Mike? Why? What's going on? What's happened to you, sir? Where have you have you have you absconded into the night, stealing your podcast and keeping it from us? Have you gone into a cave? Have you gone into hiding? Have you gone underground? I'm going underground. It's just me in the jam hiding from you guys. Is that what you're thinking? Possibly? Maybe? Ahem. All right. Here's the deal. What, so what, what, what happened was... Uh, you might remember our friend Fearful Jesuit. He runs the podcast that uh, I tease at the end of the show. Or not tease, I describe in, in full-length detail, for fuck's sake. Which, by the way, he's lapped me. He's got two episodes out right now. I'll tell you about that later. One of them I've listened to. The other one I have not. But I'll get to it eventually. And uh, all of our friends, all of our podcasting friends are just churning out content as I'm sitting here doing nothing, staring at a microphone and wondering why the fuck anybody would ever want to hear what I have to say. And yet, here we are again. Look at us. Fate has brought us together. The four of us, me and a microphone, you and your earbuds. And uh, we just stare at one another across the table as if we were going to break up with one another. But then we realize that we couldn't possibly because we need each other in our lives. There's no way we could possibly go on and without the other. And then we're just going to go ahead and prolong this agony for another 10 or 15 years. And then at that point, we'll sit down and go, boy, did we burn the last 10 or 15, right? And then one of us will finally get fed up and leave the other with a check and disappear into the night and go, you know what? Fuck you. You pay for this cheese toast, man. And then it'll be like, what? I can't understand why you're doing this. Uh, and then you'll disappear. And then the other left sitting at the table holding the check will probably five years later just still be thinking about you and going, man, what happened? What did what did she do? What did they do? What did I do? What could have been done differently? Anything? Is there anything at all that we could have gone ahead and thought about and fixed? Probably not. Our guy from Fearful Jesuit, uh, or our guy from uh, the Paranoid Strain podcast, Fearful Jesuit. Here's the thing. He has a compound up in San Francisco. You know this, right? Up in the Bay Area. Uh, I don't want to say, look, I can't specifically say where it is. Is it in Petaluma? Maybe. Is it, is it in, uh, what is it? Fremont? It could be. Is it in Truckee? That's right. Has he gone to Nevada? Perhaps he has. God damn it. All I know is he's got a compound, uh, up North in the Bay area. And, uh, you know, I told you he's got monks all over the place. He's got tons of monks that are lurking in there, uh, doing their duty. Podcasting monks are not the monks that you want to fuck with. Well, I got to be honest. You don't really want to fuck with any monks, do you? That, I don't know. I'm not going to punch a monk because monks are always undercover karate guys, right? That's always the truth. 
They, they tell you, they're like, oh, these monks are fine. They're making butter and they can draw a fucking ship on a grain of rice. Uh, and they just want to live the unexamined life. That's what the monks want to do. They want to be quiet and they want to fucking harvest wheat. And they want to go ahead and praise uh, fucking Allah, Buddha, whoever the fuck that guy, whoever their Jesus is. I forget. It's Buddha, right? Monks like Buddha. I think if you're a monk, do me a favor. Call the, the lines are open. I'm waiting right now. It's 555 monk. Call me immediately and let me know what's happening on your end. I need to know who you guys worship. Is it is it Allah? Is it Buddha? Is it uh, somebody else with an A in their name? Is it Jesus? Uh? <laughs> I think that that's all the big guys, right? Allah, Jesus, and uh, and Buddha. Those are the three main dudes. There's no other guy. Brigham Young, is he a fucking guy? I don't think so, right? Nobody worships him like a Jesus. He was just a fucking guy in stupid pants, right? And he fucked a bunch of young girls and he wore magic underwear. That's what we could all, we, we all know this about. And look, if you're a Mormon, don't breathe fire at me. I don't fucking care. Good for you, whatever the fuck. Uh, just, just don't, do me a favor. Don't drink any coffee and don't drink any Coke, all right? That's what I say to you, Mormons. Don't fucking yell at me because you get all tuned up. That's the thing. You get hopped up on your non caffeine. You're ready to come after me with your bullshit then i gotta be honest with you it's not uh it's not effective and it's not becoming you think brigham young would like that kind of thing as he comes back from the dead to watch your fucking cougars lose again in the holiday bowl i don't think <laughs> i don't think you would i don't think that's the kind of guy you want that's not the kind of example you want to set for a dead fucking missionary with uh, magical pants is going to show up and smelling like little girls right you don't want that guy why do i have mormons and little girls all tagged up i don't know that that seems to be a thing oh no that's every religion that's priests that's fucking everybody who fucking oh the, the priests went little boys maybe that's the thing mormons took the girls maybe there was a big meeting did you guys have a big meeting they're like an allah and a buddha and a jesus and a fucking brigham young and the four of you sat down and you're like all right who are we getting who are you taking and uh, and the Brigham Young got first pick. It was like literally he, he, nobody was happy about it. They used a randomizer too, and uh, every he got first pick, and everybody's like son of a, and uh, he took all the little girls. And then of course uh, Allah was next, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to take piety and charm. I don't even know what that means. And then of course uh, uh, Buddha was next. He goes, I get the monks. Fuck that. Step off. I get warrior monks who not only can make rice, but they can go ahead and be undercover karate guys, as you all know. And that left the priest with little boys. Now, they, the priests could have taken charity and goodwill. The, the priests could have said, you know what? We'll take untold and unlimited riches that we'll we use to benefit mankind. Instead, they said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to fuck boys. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take some children and, uh, and remove their pants that are, that are certainly far less magical than Brigham Young's pants. Uh, although, you know what? I will say this. Uh, in a church, a little boy's pants are just as magical as Brigham Young's underpants because they keep disappearing. What? <laughs> oh fuck i just made that up on the fly actually i gotta i'm not gonna i, I can't i can't lie uh, i thought of that three weeks ago and that's why i put off this show i'm like that's too good i gotta hold on to that and i i examined it i ran it past a bunch of people i called uh, some comedy experts i said how's this does this work and uh and uh nobody got back to me shockingly enough that's one of the reasons again why the show has been i've been waiting i've been waiting to hear back uh you call famous comedian people and they don't call you back and i'm like i'm sitting on a gold mine of disappearing underpants jokes or just one and uh, please get back to me so i can get ahead and so, look i i have to stop myself right now because uh i literally did just make that up right now and holy fuck was that funny right i guess nah, not really it's not that funny because now that I think about it, it's, it's reminiscent of uh, all little kids' pants are half off. Like, why is Michael Jackson like fucking Coles or whatever the fuck? Um, but still, I didn't think of that first. I thought of my joke. My joke was fun. Uh, just as magical as Brigham Young's underpants because they're, they're, they keep disappearing. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. Taking off there as a priest goes ahead and gets a fucking knuckle full of kid or a kid full of knuckles. Oh, dude, that sounded gross. That second part, I should have said that. Knuckle full of kid worked because then you're just like, eh, that's vague and gross. Uh, but a kid full of knuckles, ugh, that just, that just brings up images of a child who can't walk straight and now you're fucking horrified by that i'm horrified by that why would i even say that i wish i had gasoline right now i'd wash my mouth out with gasoline right here on the air i'd swish it around not unlike a mouthwash and i'd spit it like gene simmons into the air but with no fire no no no. i would let it fall back into my eyes and burn my eyes and then i would cry tears into my ears that would burn my ears gasoline tears to burn my ears because of that analogy i made gasoline tears to burn my ears because of that analogy i made oh you know i'm i'm pretty close to a bukowski right don't you think that was that's what that sounded like gasoline tears to burn my ears uh, to burn out the analogy i made is that what i i've actually just forgotten the line i don't know what i said <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, but so anyways, the fearful Jesuits got a bunch of monks up at the compound, right? And they're all up there doing damage. They're taking care of business. And I've mentioned uh, undercover karate dudes. Not only are they building in, uh, fences and sanding the floor, 
painting the fence, but then they punch those boards like monks will, though with a karate punch. And because uh, you've heard all about Pai Mei, the monk, and he's walking down, and he uh, the guy did not at him, and then he fucking destroyed the Shaolin Temple, right? That's what happens to monks. So I went up there and I was like, I want to learn from you guys, so I don't wind up like uh, like by the Shaolin getting fucking destroyed because these are the uh, the paranoid strain monks. I'm like, take me under your control. And this is uh, about three weeks ago, and they said, all right, uh, here's the first thing you need to do as a monk. And I'm like, ah, oh, do I have to wear a fucking robe? And they're like, eventually. I'm like, do I got to shave my head into a weird fucking haircut like you idiots? And they're like, you should probably tone down on the hating us and the things that we do if you're going to join us. And I'm like, that's a really good point. I apologize. Your haircuts are nice, but don't make me get it. And they said, all right, we'll hold off on the haircut. I said, I'll tell you what, I will adapt, monks. I will get a robe and a haircut just like you guys. However, give me a couple of weeks. Let me... Let me ease into monkdom. I'll do some heavy labor monking chores, whatever the fuck you got going for me. If there's some sort of like if I got to like stomp on baked potatoes to make mashed potatoes. I don't know. That's not a thing, right? Because there's, there's potato wine, but I don't think you would use mashed potatoes for that or, or even baked potatoes. I oh, don't bake potatoes because look, I'm not going to stomp on raw potatoes because Jesus Christ, that although that would be a good leg day. Hey, man, stomp this vat of potatoes into mush, but it was raw potatoes. Could you actually do that? I don't think you could. That's like Danny Hodge. You know who Danny Hodge was? Danny Hodge was a famous professional wrestler, but he was also an amateur wrestling genius. Might have been one of the toughest men who ever lived, Danny Hodge. And that's not... A, I, I, here, all right, here's a story completely true about Danny Hodge. Danny Hodge was wrestling uh, in you know professionally, and then he was driving home one night and uh, fell asleep in the car, as one will do, and he careened off the road, and he, he smashed into a, uh, a lake of some sort, uh, or perhaps a wash, or a, uh, an, a gullet, what else has water in it? I don't know. Is it a river? He crashed into a body of water and uh, and it woke him up. Thank God. And he woke up. and He's like, ah, and then he, uh, you know, because he, he rolled the car a bunch of times and he rolled into the water and then he's in the fucking thing. And he literally he had to tear his seatbelt off uh, to climb out of the car. I believe if I'm right, I, I, that might not be true, but he did something like that. Whatever the fuck. He had to tear his seatbelt. You imagine that? Go out to your seatbelt right now and put it on and then feel it. Feel if you had to tear that, not even break the buckle. You had to tear the fucking cloth. But Danny Hodge did it because he's a tough motherfucker. So he rolls the car. He goes into the body of water. He wakes up and then he, uh, he tears the seatbelt off and he kicks out the fucking window and he swims out and he gets to the shore and, uh, and he realizes something is wrong with him. Uh, but he has to get to the road. So he climbs up the hill. He walks up and then someone stops to help him. And people stop. And uh, it, here's the thing. He, like I said, he knew something was wrong with him because his head kept lolling to the side, like lunk, like back and forth. Like hold your hand up and just let it fall forward. And then backwards, he shrunk. his head was lolling because he had uh, he had snapped his neck. His neck was broken. And and I mean, not just like, you know, ow, that's a that's a hairline fracture no like it was snapped like a fucking pez dispenser and danny hodge still fought through that tore the seat belt kicked out the fucking window swam to shore all right try swimming with it with with anything with a busted clavicle or whatever the fuck anything but he and he and then he climbed up on the fucking hill and then he climbed up to the road and uh and his head was lolling back and forth and he knew it he actually had to hold it on guy had to, had, had to hold his head in place as he climbed up to get help after rolling his uh, whatever the fuck Cadillac. I'm sure it was a Cadillac. He's a very popular man. Uh, so that's how tough Danny Hodge was. But this is also true. Danny Hodge was known as a shooter. Uh, if you don't know what a shooter is, besides Jimmy Pardo, a shooter uh, in the, you know, in the parlance when people call Jimmy shooter, uh, it was it was because I, you know, I wondered, I got to find out where he got the nickname because I just know when I knew him, he was shooter already. Uh, and what it was, was people would want him to fucking kill people in the crowd. Shooter. Uh, and and what he was, it was he was going to fucking take them out. Now, that is a wrestling term for a guy that's used to police the other dudes. Like, if a guy's getting out of line or a guy's asking for too much money or he's fucking up and he's ruining things for the territory, they'll put him in the ring with a shooter. And then the shooter straightens him the fuck out because he stretches him and beats his ass for real in the fucking ring. Uh, now, I'm, I'm sure they don't do this that much now, although there is a famous one that just happened a couple of years ago. I'll tell you about it in a second. But uh, it doesn't happen much now. Like, like the, all right, you know, getting back to potatoes, if you will, in the parlance of wrestling, uh, a potato is if you accidentally punch a guy for real. Like you can potato a guy and cut his eye open. Uh, but then you're going to get a receipt, which means at some point later in the fight, uh, you're going to get punched. You're going to get fucked up. It's going to be ugly because you're going to get a receipt for the potato you gave him earlier. Aren't we learning together? Don't you love hearing about wrestling lingo? Uh, and then so the, so if you potato a shooter, oh, my God, were you going to get fucking ruined? Anyway, Danny Hodge was a shooter because he was a uh, a, a legitimate badass 
who would fuck people up. He was a boxing gold gloves champion. He was a wrestling. Uh, he didn't get to go to the Olympics because he earned money boxing, I believe, but he would have fucked people up in the Olympics. He was a four time NCAA champion, I believe. To the, to this day, the, the, the best amateur wrestler in the world receives the Danny Hodge award. I believe I could be making a lot of this up. Uh, this, a lot of this is coming from memory. You'll have to Google it and go ahead and try to fold my feet to the fire on this if you want to. But this part I'm not making up. Danny Hodge was known for a trick. Uh, Danny Hodge was known for his amazing grip strength. Okay. And that's one of the things that made him a shooter was he could get in the ring and he would clamp his hands on your fucking trapezius or your, even your arm, like your wrist or your fucking bicep. And he would squeeze the fuck out of you and cause you to scream. Like you would totally yell and you'd, because he was hurting you. He was legitimately doing it. And people knew not to fuck with Danny Hodge because he could fuck you up with the grip strength. And how would he demonstrate that grip strength? You ask, well, here's how have I talked about this? It seems like I've talked about Danny Hodge on the show before. Why is Danny Hodge haunting my skull? Um, See, here's another thing. I go, I do these fucking Twitch streams, and I don't know if I talked about Danny Hodge on there, if I talked about Danny Hodge on here. Who the fuck knows? And all I know is, that, again, I haven't done a show in three weeks, and everybody's going to be like, oh, it's a fucking rerun about Danny Hodge. I don't know who that guy is who complains, but he's there. Don't don't kid yourself. I'll hear from him. If there's some dude who's out there and he's pissed off, I'm talking about Danny Hodge. He's going to write me and go, you know what, Mike? Uh, you Like six weeks ago, you talked about Danny Hodge, man. What the fuck? And uh, and I, I, I'm sorry. I apologize to you. I, I didn't mean to bring so much Danny Hodge into your fucking life. Danny Hodge was uh, the king of grip strength. And what he would do is he would take an apple. Someone would give him an apple and he would squeeze it in his hands until it exploded. Uh, think about that. God damn it. Think about that. Go ahead right now. Grab an apple. Go ahead. Go ahead and grab a Granny Smith right now off your countertop. Or, uh, or you know, what? get a Golden Delicious. Even that one. You know what? Get a, uh, get a, a Honey Crisp. You got that? Get a Fuji. Get a Red Delicious. Whatever the fuck you got. Grab one of those and just fucking put it in your hand and think to yourself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to squeeze the fuck out of this apple till it explodes and I make juice. You could never do that. Who the fuck do you think you are, Danny Hodge? No, you're not. Step off. Put the fruit back on the counter and take three steps back. Take a deep breath and thank God that Danny Hodge isn't here to teach you a fucking lesson. Because if he saw you grab the apple in an aggressive way and then kind of look side eye at him, he would just totally fuck up your trapezius. <laughs> Nobody wants a hodged up trapezius. Fuck that, man. My trapeziuses are clean. I don't want him to get fucking hodged up. Hands off, Hodge. With your Lollin Pez dispenser fucking head, you want your neck broken again? Step to me, Hodge, you old buff fuck. He just died. Uh, this is why I'm calling him out, because th- this is another thing. Danny, Danny Hodge was well known for settling scores. And uh, and if he knew that if he was alive, because he's now it's like he was like 97 when he died. But still, if he heard this podcast and he was like 97, he would still come for me and he would still use the grip strength on me. And he would hodge up my trapezius in a way that I couldn't even fucking explain with words. It would have to be done with guttural yells. I would, I, it would sound like the fucking uh, the dungeon at the heart heart family house. God damn it. You just hear me screaming through the vents. If you don't know what that is, Google it, because I don't know if you want to hear more wrestling stuff. Or perhaps you do. I don't know. Is that why you've tuned in? After three weeks, you're like to yourself, oh, I can only hope that Mike talks about the dungeon at the Hart's house. Uh, so I mentioned that's that's how I got onto potatoes and, and Danny Hodge. Well, I got, into, I got into stomping on potatoes. That's what monks do when they try to make potato wine. They wind up climbing into the old hot tub and they stomp on the potatoes, but they have to be baked because then they can smush. And that's why monks have heat proof feet. You ever see because the monks there in that because they, they fucking dump in the baked potatoes right out of a steaming cauldron and they're steaming and the fucking monks got to jump in there barefoot style and stomp on them and their feet are calloused like you ever see those dudes in Hawaii who run on fire and I'm not talking like the bullshit fucking Tony Robbins assholes I'm talking like the fucking native dudes who eat a fucking pig snatch the apple in its mouth eat some pineapple do a fire dance and walk across from coals and then you go back to your fucking room and, and go wow that was crazy wasn't it and then you fly home a week later <laughs> remembering those guys and now they're still back on the island going ah. Oh, Oh, fuck. Imagine that being your job. You go to vacation in Hawaii, right? And you're like, oh, I'm finally getting two weeks off of work. I don't know who's getting two weeks off of work. And I, and I two weeks in Hawaii sounds like a long time. I was there for four days uh, and I loved it. It was great. But two weeks, boy, that sounds like a long time, doesn't it? Two weeks sounds like a long time anywhere until you're there. Like I did the two weeks in Japan and, uh, and it seemed like, wow, two weeks is going to be fucking amazing. We're going to do everything. And then we were coming to the end of the trip and I'm like, we didn't do anything. We, we, I left Tokyo once for fuck's sake. Uh, there was so much left unsaid. There was so much left undone. Uh, but yeah, in Hawaii, those dudes fucking walk on fire. You go, so you go through for your, you take two weeks off work. You go to Hawaii and you're like, Hey, let's have some pineapple for breakfast. And then we'll have some poi as well. It's disgusting, but we'll eat it anyway, because we don't want to offend these people because they have a volcano. And if we don't eat their fucking national dish, they'll do a dance. It'll spit lava in our face. That's not fucking cool. Uh, and I don't want a guy with five eyes in his first name to come after me. (laughs) 
<laughs> what's up? Uh-uh. <laughs> Guys, can it, everybody in Hawaii has been named by dolphins. The fuck, man? Hey, what's up? Uh, that's actually a squirrel in a blender. I, uh, everybody in Hawaii, all of their names, all of them were named by dolphins. Everybody in Hawaii has got a name. It's just, it's, if Morse cold was only in vowels. A-E-I-O-U, A-E-I-I-E-O-U with K's. K-E-I-K-K-K-K-I-A-K-O. K-E-I-K-O-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-K-
they're going to charge for air. It's just, it's, I might as well, you know what? I might as well just go to a fucking parking lot and, and pay for four parking spaces and just set up chairs in those and do stand up. honestly, because it's the same fucking thing. You're renting air. Although I guess if you're renting these fucking buildings, you're also renting a roof. But it says right on there, it'll say like no Wi-Fi, no fucking, no, I mean, what, what are you doing? It's just a garage then at that fucking point. And I did some fucking funky places. I went to Portland and did the hip bone and I liked that. It was a dance studio. I rented the fucking Fabra Faction in, in Atlanta, which is gone. And that was fucking sweet. I loved that theater. The Solard was way out of my league. It had too many fucking seats in St. Louis. That was a, a mess. Uh, Boston, I did a YMCA theater and we had to set up our own fucking chairs and shit like that. God damn it. But didn't they, I think they set them up for us. I don't know. It was nine fucking years ago. How the fuck am I supposed to remember? I can't remember what happened nine fucking minutes ago. I'm supposed to remember what happened nine goddamn fucking years ago. Uh, so monks are stomping on potatoes and their feet are just fucking covered in calluses. It's disgusting. Don't drink potato wine that comes from monks because it's covered in also callus juice. You know, there's callus juice that comes out of a fucking monk foot. Nobody wants a <laughs> Nobody, nobody wants callus juice from a monk foot. I gotta be honest. I don't want callus juice from any foot, but especially not a monk foot because that's a pious juice. I'll, I'll be, I'll be drinking that potato wine and be like, oh, this is the most pious wine I ever drank. Jesus Christ. It, it literally tastes like the sign of the cross. I don't like it. Although monks don't like Jesus, right? Who do they like? They like Buddha. We already established this. Although they, I don't think all monks like Buddha, right? I got to talk to Jesuit. Anyway, so here's the point. Uh, I say, you say, where have I met for three weeks? I wanted to join these monks and they said, terrific. Come on up. And I said, don't make me do monk shit. Let me sit for two weeks and we'll see what the fuck happens. Then I'll take off. Don't give me a monk outfit. Don't shave my fucking head. I'm not going to make monk wine stomping on the potatoes, which have to be baked, as I've mentioned. So they're soft because no, Danny Hodge is not here to crush every potato in his goddamn hands to make that potato wine. Oh, I thought I was going to tell you this. Remember, I said I'd tell you more about a potato in a receipt uh, because the shooters aren't existing anymore. Well, I'll tell you this. There is uh, there was a situation a couple of uh, years ago you can actually google this and find it it's pretty fun uh there's a guy named braun Strowman who no longer has an organization he's not wrestling anymore he was in the wwe for a while and braun Strowman, i don't think he was in game of thrones but i think oh he was friends with the 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 mountain is that his name who's the strong dude who's on on game of thrones he's a giant dude who's marrying a tiny he's marrying literally one of the little girls who sang to mothra in the godzilla movies that little tiny girl who lives in a shoebox like uh, like uh what Kristen chenoweth like one of those chicks <laughs> one of those girls trapped in a spider web at the end of the fly whatever the fuck she's totally tiny and she's marrying the mountain from uh from game of thrones right just because it, you know at that point they're just they're getting married so just to blow people's minds, just so people, because you can't look at the mountain from fucking Game of Thrones and his child bride, who is not a child, but just shaped, child shaped, whatever the fuck, little wedding cake chick, and you can't not think of them having sex, right? You have to, because I mean, look, he's the mountain. He's a big, massive muscle dude. And if he's taking the spike, he might be on roids. So maybe his ball shriveled up, but I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to say because he's a mountain, he's a big dude. Everything's big. That's a girthy motherfucker. And then she's like, like tiny and she's going to climb the fucking mountain and hop down on his cock and stuff like that. You have to think about that when you see the two of them. Now, you might think to yourself, well, no, I just want to think about their lovely relationship and how they're together and everybody likes them. And that's fine. Well, then we're different, you and I, because if I see the mountain and his and his ridiculously tiny fucking parrot on a shoulder girlfriend, I think to myself, how do they make that shit work? Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, he because he's. I mean, you just, he would, it would be like going down on a fucking doll, right? Just picking her up and then and he, he doesn't even go down and he just rubs her on his face. Like, like, like rubbing a balloon on your shirt and then sticking it. He just does that. He just rubs her pussy on his face and a whap sticks her on his fucking face to the goddamn xenomorph alien. She's going to put some eggs in his throat. That's that. Oh, that'll turn a chick on. Hey, honey, how you doing? You want to put some eggs in my throat? Let's fucking make this go. Let's fucking make this work. Hey, you want to fucking choke me? Let's do it. You want to probe me and put some eggs in my throat? Let's fucking make this happen. Uh, so the mountain's a big guy, right? He's a big giant dude. Well, Braun Strowman is a... I don't think he was in Game of Thrones, but he, he became one of the, he became the world's strongest man after the mountain. Like after the mountain left to become an actor. Uh, I think Braun Strowman became the world's strongest man. He's one of those idiots. You know, one of those fucking dudes who lifts up a mailbox and runs for 50 feet. You know, those the, the, the made-up sport where they're like, hey, dude, what if you took a Volkswagen uh, and you threw it over a high jump bar? Like, we'll set up a high jump bar. You know what? Better yet, let's set up a pole vault bar. Oh, am I going to pole vault? No, you're not. You're going to grab a Yugo and toss it over the, <laughs> the bar at, at various heights. You think you can pull that off? Yes. 
I think just answering yes makes you a fucking contestant. Like they don't even have, you don't need to prove it. I think I think just answering yes gets you a medal. I, if I'm there and they're like, hey, man, could you pick up this Yugo and throw it over a fucking pole vault bar? And I'd be like, yes, they would just give me a medal. There'd be a ceremony. I'd stand in a podium. I'd wave at a couple of people and I'd split. Uh, of course, the medal would be uh, made of fucking lead <laughs> and, it, and it would weigh a thousand pounds and they would expect me to carry it out of there. See, that's the second trial. Oh, you thought there was just one trial saying yes. No, 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 no. You win and you get your medal, but it's a thousand pound lead disc with your own face carved into it. And they put it around your neck and you have to try to leave the stadium with it. You think you could drag a thousand pounds around? You guys think you can't touch it with your hands. You, you have to leave it around your neck and drag it out of the fucking stadium like a goddamn ox pulling a, a, a gore and a yoke and a fucking plow. Uh, what's a yoke? The yoke is the thing that goes over your shoulders, right? The yoke goes over the, oh, the ox's shoulders. Do oxes have shoulders? I don't know. Oxen, Ollie free, whatever the fuck. I don't know. Look, I don't know how to pluralize animals. I don't know anything you want to know about ox. I didn't pretend that I did, but I do know this. I do know about potatoes. Braun Strowman, professional wrestler, after being one of the world's strongest men. Now, look, I'm not saying he stopped being one of the world's strongest men and went into wrestling. I think he got into wrestling because he was one of the world's strongest men. And I think that possibly the wrestling organization wanted to sign him because he's one of the world's strongest men. Nobody said, you know what? Uh, once that guy stopped being a, a finished, uh, finished being one of the world's strongest men, sign him up for our wrestling. Because we need to have one of the 10 strongest men in the world. We don't want the strongest man. Let this guy fucking get out of shape a little bit. And then we'll bring him into organization. We don't want him to have a fucking big head. Fuck this cocky strongest man in the world bullshit. Give him some goddamn Doritos and let him get a fucking uh, some love handles. And then we'll bring him into organization. Although you're going to inevitably have love handles if you're one of the strongest men in the world, right? Just because you're not nobody chiseled like fucking Jay Cutler, right? Or, or Sergio Oliva. That's, I'm, I think I'm out of bodybuilders at that point. I think you've got me at that. But I think I think that might be the only two bodybuilders until we go to like Schwarzenegger and Ferrigno. And uh, and who was the other dude who fucking Schwarzenegger used to have in his movies? Everybody thought they were uh, they were possibly gay gentlemen. Um, Franco Colombo? Yeah, that might be him. Franco Colombo. Uh, but he's not. He wasn't a gay dude, right? Him and Schwarzenegger. Well, I mean, well, here's the thing. They posed like naked for muscle magazines. So once those came out, everybody's like, oh, look at these guys are totally gay. And it's like, well, they're not gay. They're just fucking oiled up and taking poses, right? I mean, gay guys might look at the book and go, yeah, just because a gay guy finds you hot doesn't mean you're gay. Just means you're some fucking meat to be fucking observed. I don't know if observed is the right word. (laughs) Hey, man. Hey, you want to get one of those porno mags and observe some of those hot muscle dudes? Oh, I can't wait to observe them. Did you observe that Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, my God. I observed him. But I was really, I, I totally observed Franco Colombo. Oh, what a hot gentleman. Uh, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop staring. Um, so that doesn't mean they're gay. I don't, I don't mean to look, I don't mean to cast aspersions and say that it's not even casting aspersions. I don't mean, I don't, it's not even the truth. I don't think that, that Schwartz, like a Schwarzenegger, he's fucking the maid. He's fucking everybody who moved, right? He's, he's another one of these idiots. Who's just, who's just got a, a thing for grabbing everything in his fucking reach. But now he's a hero. I mean, I don't know if you've seen this now. He's like, he's, he's all for going against climate change and he hated Trump. So everybody's like, yeah, Arnold. And it's like, Hey, you remember when Arnold finger blasted the fucking maid? You remember that? That was a thing that happened a while ago, uh, but it doesn't matter. Nothing sticks anymore uh, except for fucking uh, the mountain's girlfriend to his face. Nothing sticks. You can get fucking accused of anything. And then like within it depends. I mean, it could be a week. It could be a day. It could be a fucking year. It could be 10 years that people will forget. But, but also there will always be people there to remind you because this totally happened. There's a football player for the Kansas City Chiefs. His name is Tyreek Hill. Now, Tyreek Hill is a fantastic football player, an amazing receiver, and one of the fastest players in the NFL. Also, Tyreek Hill, uh, what's the word I'm searching for? Possibly a shitbag. Um, not a good guy. And uh, and uh, problematic, I guess, is the, the nicest way to say it, really. Uh, Tyreek Hill, this is completely true, beat up his pregnant girlfriend. Uh, and there's like audio, there's audio of him threatening to kill her and the baby. Like he's, uh, he's a bad guy is my point. But, uh, the NFL (laughs) in their wisdom said, well, look, he's really fast. And, uh, and for some reason he still plays with the Kansas city chiefs and he's an all pro and he's, he's been in the last two super bowls. He's an amazing player and I'll probably draft him in fantasy if I get the chance. Uh, mainly because I, as the owner of the fantasy team, can make sure that his girlfriend comes nowhere near the club. And I will not have any issues with having to lose him during the season for him doing something stupid because I can keep him on the straight and narrow with my team. Uh, 
However, in real life, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. And also, he's just he's just a fucking... And look, man, it's the NFL. They're banging their fucking brains into applesauce. All, all of them have a fucking edge. Uh, but if you straddle your pregnant girlfriend and punch her in the face or whatever the fuck he supposedly did, uh, you're not a fucking good guy at all. You're a terrible person. And... and uh, I'd like to think you'll pay for it at some point, but you won't. You never will. Nobody gets comeuppance. Nobody rich ever gets their comeuppance in this country. It's never going to happen. The only, the only, it's like, because when it does happen, it's like when they got OJ on the civil trial. You know what I mean? Like, finally, they're like, finally, we got this asshole. They got him on the civil trial, and then they got him for stealing his autographs, and then they, for <laughs> the judge. Like, I think I think he was only supposed to get three years. But then the judge is like, I'm giving you 17 years in jail. And everybody's like, what the fuck? Why? He, he well, because there was a gun. Well, he didn't have a gun. Some other guy had a gun. Doesn't matter. He's a felon. And he was in the commission of a felony with another guy who held a gun. And Nevada law says like they had to break out every creaky fucking statute they could possibly find to hang OJ because they wanted to basically retry him for Nicole and Ron, which, again, I got no issue with that because you're a fuck bag and you should be in fucking jail as it is. God damn it. Um, but it was really funny when it happened because even OJ's in the fucking courtroom. Like, wait, what, what the fuck? I literally went and stole a football card from somebody and, and possibly like a, an old Heisman trophy or a football. And I'm going to jail for 17 years because a buddy of mine stupidly brought a gun. Uh, but then he went into the clink and it's another thing. How the fuck does OJ? Cause he's out now he's out and not only is fucking OJ out. All right. Well, first of all, let's go back. I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of myself. OJ's in jail in Nevada. And then from what I heard, and again, I don't, I heard things like, look, I don't have any connections on the inside. All right. I don't have anybody. I don't have ears in gen pop in Nevada. All right. I don't have any of that bullshit. All I know is what I heard, you know, scuttlebutt you heard reported through this or that or whatever the fuck. And, uh, supposedly he was a hero in jail. You know, like Tyson was a hero in jail, like, and, they, and, and guys like looked out for him and they fucking took care of him or whatever. It's like. You know, we always hear that jail's a fucking horrific place, right? And jail's a terrible place. Like, if your name, if your name is fucking Rick, and and you're from Omaha, jail's gonna suck. Like, jail's gonna suck for Rick from Omaha. But if you're Bill Cosby or Mike Tyson or, or fucking OJ or one of these dudes who go to jail, it's like they they fucking look out for you. They they, I guess. I mean, they must have looked out for Cosby because if they hadn't, they would have. They because <laughs> all right, look, they had to. I'm going to say this and I, I I'm it's and there may be some controversy, but I'm going to throw this out there. All right. And it's kind of along the same theory I had with Superman. Uh, but stick with me, please. All right. If you're in that jail. OK. And uh, and, and because we always hear these things about how uh, someone wants to get famous. Ah, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to shank that guy when he comes in here. Why? Why? I'll tell you what. When that when that fella gets in here, I'm going to make a name for myself. Like the guy who killed Dahmer with a mop or whatever the fuck. Right. Dahmer's in the jail and uh, and some dude fucking kills him with a mop. Just leaves him laying there in a fucking heap. And that guy makes a name for himself. So like, ha ha. That's right. I'm the dude who killed Dahmer. And everybody's like, yay. Right. Well, aren't aren't there dudes like that for like Cosby and Simpson? Like if you were or even and, and look, I'm going to say this. Don't yell. But like rape. Well, let's talk about that for just a second. Like there had to be somebody in that jail because look, Cosby. I mean, he's 85 and old. It's it's not exactly going to be a bum rush. All right. You're not, you're not going to have to lure him to the fucking the hydro room and trick him by telling him you'll get him a cushy job in the fucking machine shop. All right. You're you could pretty much just uh, tap him on the shoulder at this point. Eighty five and blind. The guy's not even going to see it fucking coming. And you then would be known as the guy who raped Bill Cosby. Now, I, I don't know. I don't want to say speak to a lot of guys in jail and how crazy they are or not crazy they are. Perhaps everybody in jail is a decent person, and I'm assuming too much. But I have to think there would be some kind of weird bona fides in being the guy who raped O.J. Simpson. Don't you think? And maybe I'm thinking too much along the lines of movies or television or or making a name for yourself. Maybe this is the me watching Oz you know, like when the guy went, when fucking at a BC rape Shibetta and he like fucking that was it. Like Shibetta was now used goods and nobody's going to listen to the Italians anymore. Maybe, maybe that's me just thinking in dramatic circumstances. But it but it, it seems to me that because uh, because also and I, I'll, I'll throw this out here right now. Uh, OJ, yes. Cosby, yes. Nobody was going to rape Mike Tyson. Like that, that was never happening because that was still prime of his life. Mike Tyson, that was still I'm 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 impregnable and I will eat your fucking children and all that bullshit. That was that fucking guy. And also he was uh, 
he was young and he was still a hero to a lot of dudes in there. You know what I mean? Because they, because he was still a fucking machine. He was still the man, uh, other than the fact that he raped a beauty queen, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and, and maybe it's because, you know, OJ killed, uh, like a wife and maybe they could say there, maybe there's guys who are like, you know what? I understand why he killed his wife and the fucking waiter. The waiter came by and he wasn't supposed to fucking be there. He brought Salisbury steak over and there's OJ in the bushes going, what the fuck is this guy doing here? I only, I bring Salisbury steak to my wife. And so he cut her head off. I mean, uh, you know, if you're in jail, that's maybe not a far leap. You know, these guys in jail are in there for a lot of fucking weird things. Granted, it seems like for some reason, 96% of the people in jail are because they bought a fucking joint once. What the fuck happened in this country, man? They just started running people in for drugs. Now, marijuana is fucking legal. And all these dudes are in jail. They're going, hey, um, my backpack smelled like weed and I've been in jail for six years. They're like, shut up. They throw them in the hole for two years. Like, what the fuck, man? Let these dudes go. Can't there be some sort of. I don't know, uh, a leap back in time. Can't there be some special courtroom where they just review every single fucking drug case and go, you're out, you're out, you're out. Cause they did nothing. A guy had a, a fucking half an ounce and he's in fucking the clink for eight fucking years. And yet now I can walk down the street and this is not a joke. I can walk down either direction of my street, a, a quarter mile in one direction or a, a half mile in the other direction. And I can buy weed at two different places. And, and nobody would say a fucking thing. They'd just be like, hey, look, there's a white guy buying weed and it wouldn't be a crime. Meanwhile, there's a ton of fucking black dudes who are fucking selling and white dudes and Hispanic dudes and fucking Asian dudes, monks. They're all in fucking jail for selling weed. Let these motherfuckers out. Why are they in there? It doesn't make any fucking sense. But nothing makes any sense anymore, does it? Think to yourselves. Nothing makes any sense anymore. The fact that nobody raped O.J. Simpson in jail. How did that not fucking happen? How would you not want to be the guy who fucking tagged O.J. Simpson? God damn it. Because you know what? He's going to go to that prison and he's in jail and it's not, he doesn't have Joe DeLamalure running fucking interference for him. He doesn't have Reggie McKenzie blocking anybody for him. The electric company is not clearing a hole for O.J. Simpson. If anything, you can be clearing O.J. Simpson's hole for yourself. Why didn't you rape O.J. in jail? I'm furious at the entire population of the Nevada Prison Department. Is it a department? A jail? Whatever the fuck. Uh, I don't want O.J. raped. Whatever the fuck. I kill him, though. Maybe. Could you have done that or hurt him? Break his arm. I don't know. Take a finger. Couldn't you take a finger? Just one. Well, that's it. That seems like enough. Just take his fucking finger, but do it painfully. Snap it off and tear it off. Don't just fucking cut it cleanly. Don't, don't, don't Yakuza fucking OJ. Just tear his fucking finger off. We need a German shepherd to eat his finger. That's what I need. Could we do that? Uh, anyway, so I don't understand. Again, these guys just wander out. Now, but, but I will say this. There is at least one dude who's still in jail. It's fucking Weinstein. How great is that? I, I just, that fucking mope. Every time they drag him out. <laughs> Those guys, I have to admit, it cracks me up. Uh, Weinstein's in jail in New York. And then they're like, hey, we're going to extradite him to L.A. because there's more charges here. So then there's a picture of him in the courtroom. And he's like, he's like in a wheelchair with <laughs> with like a CPAP machine strapped to his mouth and, and to both ears. Like he's, he's so out of it. And, you know, in his brain, he's just like, oh, man, all I did was drool on Annabella Shore's stomach. Why the fuck am I in here, man? But fuck you. You know what you did, you fuck. You terrible, terrible fucking monster. And I love it. And look, and I don't, and look, I'm not rooting for anybody to get raped. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it should happen, but if it happened to Weinstein, eh, you know what, man, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Hmm, what, it was a movie, I think, with Tupac and possibly Janet Jackson. Yeah, you know what, they got a Tupac and Janet Jackson, that motherfucker. That's poetic justice, is what I call it, if fucking Weinstein gets tagged in jail. But again, I love, I just love the misery that he's experiencing. And also, I think his brother got away, didn't he? I, I think that, because we always see Harvey... But then uh, who's the other? Who's the brother? Jacob, Jason. I don't know what the fucking brother's name is, but I think he flipped on Harvey, didn't he? And he was a bad guy, too. But he, he fucking scuttled up and made a goddamn deal for himself pretty goddamn quick. And uh, and he disappeared. And, and, and you can't blame him because, you know what? Because he's like <laughs> he flipped. He flipped on Harvey and he gave his testimony. And they were like, he's like anything else. They're like, no, but he goes, OK, no trade backs. And he leaped into a fucking running car and disappeared into the night, never to be fucking seen again, because he knows eventually they'll uncover some bullshit that he did. And they'll be like, oh, we should throw that guy in Gen Pop. And he's like, nope. I have lost a thousand pounds and shaved my head. And now I live in a fucking farm in goddamn Utah looking for Brigham Young and his magical underpants. God damn it. Oh, man. I don't know. What the fuck was I talking about? But Weinstein comes out looking miserable. I love it. I love it when he's so miserable in the fucking courtroom, just like a lump sitting in a fucking chair and looking up. God damn it. My fucking screen keeps blinking. I did scaring the shit out of me, dude. If I lose this fucking show, I'm going to kill somebody. 
after fucking fighting to get through it because I, I <laughs> just like yesterday I started it. Dude, I started a show yesterday and I started talking about to make a, a tour with Marvin Gaye's skeleton, like digging him up. I bet you could make money if you toured with, with him and just like a backing track of his song, but like Marvin Gaye's skeleton set up in front of a microphone and how you could make cash. And I, I don't even know how long I got into it. Then I go, and I literally, then everybody go, I hate this fucking show. And I stopped it. I turned it off. <laughs> What a fucking weirdo. My house is haunted, and so is my brain. Jesus. Um, Weinstein looks miserable in those courtrooms. They just fucking wheel him out there, and he's just sitting at the table. This this is a guy who, you know, he... he, he like, I didn't even realize... Like, he ran Miramax, and Miramax is named after his parents. That guy had... And I didn't even, it's funny. I didn't even think about the fact that that fuckhead had parents. That That fucking disgusting, slobbering ogre had Mira and Max and he named their company and he made it fucking, I mean, granted he ruled it with an iron fist and acted like a jag off and bullied everybody and was the fucking terror of goddamn Hollywood in New York. But at the same time, you know, it was a name everybody knew and it was very successful. Well, whether he got there that way or not and, and the disgrace he brought on himself and his family and his parents and, 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 and he has to think of it every day, right? I mean, even if you, those guys are in jail and they delude themselves like Cosby, like Cosby's like, ah, oh, man, you know, and I didn't do nothing just in the jail and I've got the sheets of cold in here. Turn the heat up, please. Uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he has to have a moment of reflection don't you think i mean look and, and, and he's a, cr- a a fucking cruel narcissist there's no doubt he's done terrible terrible things and he may have actually deluded himself into thinking he didn't do these things and they weren't that bad but there has to come a moment where he's like i shouldn't have put the zizel zop in the bezel do and made the girl take the nippy nap on the climb daughter and put the ziz in the booze boo <laughs> He had to think that to himself at some point, right? Uh, or did he just pity himself and go, man, I'm 85 and blind. I can't, why am I in fucking jail? I, I, was, I was so close. Does he think that? Does he, is he completely aware of it? And he thought to himself, I'm so close. I got, I'm right near the finish line here. You can't put me in the clink. Then they put him in the clink and then they find some way to let him go. And that, that happened fucking quick. I, like, I, that morning I got up and they were like, uh, his thing got overturned. I'm like, what? And by the time I got to the gym on the treadmill, he was in a car. Like, he wasn't even fucking around. Uh, it was, it was, it might have been an hour that I heard it. I was like, well, how did this get overturned? What? And they just, they fucking dispatched him out. And immediately, you know, of course, uh, outrage abounds because that's what everybody fucking does now. They traffic in outrage and everybody was pissed. And they're like, oh, I guarantee he's going to be at comedy clubs. I guarantee he's going to be out there. And then within an hour, his lawyer was like, he's looking forward to, you know, he's totally innocent. And he's looking forward to getting out there and getting his story out to the fans. You know, some clubs have already contacted him. He's contacted some theaters. He's putting together a tour now. And uh, and look, that, that's another thing, too. When he went to jail, it was that same thing where he was blind. That's the thing. He couldn't walk. They had to help him. They had to put him in a fucking gurney. And he's like, I can't see my eyes are covered with the gauze of being old. And I don't want to see the jail. And, uh, and then he gets out of jail and he's gone in an hour. Like He probably jumped up and clicked his fucking heels. He probably ran up the wall like Donald O'Connor and fucking singing in the rain. That motherfucker, he was ready to go. That would, whenever they're going to put him in the clink, they always roll him in and they get like a coffee can strapped on their head. I got, I needed to breathe. I can't breathe on my own. I got the Hills Brothers on my mouth to go get the coffee lungs to go. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they they always look as pathetic as they possibly can. And then they get out of jail. And he's like, I'm going on tour. How are you going on tour? You were 85 and blind. You were literally like one of the, one of the things in the fucking courtroom, like they, you were trying to take notes on a legal pad and you dropped your pen and you felt around for it. It looked like a goddamn Buster Keaton sketch. Like you, everybody's waiting for you to find the pen, like Chaplin. What the fuck? Grab it and write. But instead you played the blind guy to the hilt. And then when they put you in jail, you stood up your <laughs> He's feeling around on the walls. I don't know where the jail is. Can't see nothing because my eyes are covered by the book of blood. Whatever. Um, but then they release him and he's like, going on tour. Let's go hit the road, Jack. It's like it's like I said when the George Burns like was in the hospital and they're like, ah, George Burns is up. 
He gets up in the morning, has a hearty breakfast, reads the newspaper, teases the nurses. They all love him. He's like 107. Let it go, you fucking old fuck. Die. It's okay. And you don't even have to die. Just don't pretend like you're not old. We know you're old. If they were like, yeah, man, he needs a long fucking rest. This dude needs to just lay in a bed. Nobody bother him. Please don't scare him. Nobody leap out and scare him. No, no paparazzi. Nobody jump through a window. Fucking right now, George Burns is a sneeze away from death. And that's not even just his. Like, it's yours or his. Like, if he sneezes, possibly everything breaks. His insides turn to aquarium rocks. His fucking bones just crumble into gravel. And then he's done. He's finished. However, at the same time, if he's in his bed and you sneeze and you spook him, Jesus Christ, the guy just, he has any sort of startle, any sort of, if there's a lightning strike, any sort of thunder, George Burns will die. Don't you understand this? This man is any sudden movement or, or loud noise away from heading to the fucking pearly gates. Calm the fuck down. See, if you give that speech, everybody's like, oh, wow. All right, well, we got to let's revere George Burns. But all this dumb bullshit's like, ah, oh, George Burns got up. He did some fucking uh, he did some leg presses this morning, did a couple of somersaults. He shadow boxed for a while. No, he fucking did. He's 171 years old. Jesus fucking Christ. This guy couldn't shadow box if you tied strings to his arms and worked him like a fucking marionette. But they always do that. They always, and it's just the just clinging to the to the last vestiges of being vital. You don't have to be fucking vital all the time. Cosby gets out of jail. He should have just been like, you know what, man? I was in jail, and uh, I'm not going to do the voice this time. <laughs> uh, I reflected on everything that's happened, and I can only hope to make amends in some way. Uh, I, I'm not admitting any sort of guilt. I'm not saying I did anything wrong, but it's clear that people have been hurt and I need to figure out why and what I can do about that. Now, is that acceptable? No. Does it show growth as a person? Maybe if you believe him, but why not? Why not take that approach instead of immediately going, can't wait to hit the boards. Ha cha cha. Let's get vaudeville fired up again. Call the ladies. We're going out on the road. That is great. Jail will have to wait. Fuck off, man. Just go, you know what? I'm 85 and I'm blind. And, uh, and that was a fucking close call. I was just in jail for like a year and a half. And, uh, and man, that sucked. I haven't seen my wife. I haven't seen my family, my kids, anybody. Uh, and maybe I'd like to go spend some time with them and possibly, you know what? Take a knee and ride out the rest of my goddamn life with the people that I love who stood by me through this fucking bullshit. Camille, fucking Camille Cosby. What are you thinking? I mean, she she gets the money anyway, right? Unless he changed the fucking will. I don't know what she did or he did or whatever the fuck they got going on. But Jesus Christ, how do you stand by him through all that bullshit? The, the guy's just there's pills falling out of his pocket at all times. You're, and she, you know, she's got to pick up his clothes and find a handful of fucking knockout drops or whatever the fuck he used because he wasn't subtle about it. That's the thing. It wasn't like he was surreptitiously going, oh, let me slide this into a lady's drink. Fuck. No, this guy had a gumball machine with fucking uh, d- d- Prozac or not even Prozac, fucking sleeping pills, Valium, whatever the fuck. See, that's how you know I'm not a bad guy. I don't know the name of the drugs. Or did I fool you by saying that? Uh, why wouldn't he just say, you know what, man, uh, that was close and it sucked and jail was terrible. And I'm going to go be with my family. But this guy is just like, nah, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go on the road. I'm, I've, you know what? I that <laughs> had 18 months in prison has shown me. I want nothing more than a comedy club hamburger and a Mike's hard lemonade. Get me out on the road. God damn it. I need, I need to hear the hollow laughter of people who are easily fooled. <laughs> Get me out there in front of all of them, baby. Um, well, don't you want to spend time with Camille? Hey, look, if I wanted to spend time with Camille, I wouldn't have been in jail in the first fucking place. Jesus, I, I had to rape 85 chicks just to get away from Camille, for fuck's sake. The, look, the only reason I raped any of these women was so I would possibly go to jail and get away from Camille. Have you spoken to her? The woman is a bit of a shrew. Camille gets taken down even at the end. Fucking idiot. Spend some time with your family. It's like, you know, this is another thing, too. I'm, uh... <laughs> Jay Leno is, is he has another television show coming out and he's working at flappers and Burbank all the time. And, and again, as you know, Jay Leno was one of my heroes. It's one of the reasons I'm doing stand up comedy is because of Jay Leno, uh, Carlin, Dennis Miller, Jay Leno, certainly Letterman is, is probably the top. Um, but God, I loved Leno and Letterman. I loved him so much. We've talked about it in here a million times. I called him once and he actually called me back. I still have it on a micro cassette. I mean, he's just, he's just, he was one of my heroes, but now you know, he's, he's at Flappers in Burbank because uh, the Hermosa Beach Comedy Magic Club has uh, has fallen by the wayside with the pandemic and things like that. And and he has to work 
uh, because God forbid he enjoy his money in any sort of way or fashion. Uh, and so he's there at flappers like, like every weekend now, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think, I think he's doing three nights a week at flappers showing up in, in impeccable suits and fucking coming on, teared it up. And, and here's the thing, like, are there, are there people like, are there young people? Cause the young people who know Jay Leno only know him as the guy who fucked Conan. Right. I mean, like there's nobody, Nobody under the age of 40 is like, oh, my God, Leno is so fucking hysterical. But it's still to me like to it to me, it would be a big deal to see Leno in a room. I'd be like, holy fuck, because I remember him when before the Tonight Show when he was just a fucking machine. He was on fucking Leno or, or Letterman all the time. But the point is, he, he's another guy who. And look, you work till you die. I get it. I hear all that all the time. You just because you, you don't slow down because I go the other way. I'm I'm going to not work till I die. I and that's one of the reasons why, you know, unfortunately, the show is three weeks fucking late. I'm I'm trying to, to, to grab the bolt rope and climb out of this fucking hole that I've made for myself. And I will. I will. I will. Uh, but like, a, 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 you know, I have to be like Leno. Maybe I have to just keep moving. I have to start moving at least. You know what I mean? Because Leno's doing stand up and now he's got he's got a show again with his fucking cars and he's driving around with famous people about cars. And then also, dude, he, but now he's got he's doing you bet your life like they took the Groucho movie or Groucho show Groucho movie, the Groucho show. You bet your life. Uh, and uh, if if you're young right now, you're going, what the fuck are you talking about? What is Groucho? Is that a Muppet? Like, you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. So that's what I'm saying is like Jay Leno, who's who's only famous to a certain generation, is now taking a show from the generation before that and trying to repurpose it in some way. And uh, and again, it's it's essentially a way for him to do crowd work and show his chops. And I hope I hope he gets to be mean on the show. I go. I hope he I hope he's more truthful to who he is because he is he is cutting and he is kind of mean. And and it would be cool if he did it that way, like Groucho did. Groucho was a fucking uh uh, a, a gentle bully, if you will, on that show. That's what he did. But he was affable and he teased people and he had a good time doing it. Uh, I, I, I don't know if Leno can pull it off, but even worse than that is, what the, what the fuck are you doing another show for? Why are you doing any shows? Why are you even leaving the house? And again, this is this is a flaw in me. I recognize that because I... If because he remember he used to joke around he doesn't I even touch hey I just did my comedy money I haven't even touched my Tonight Show money you know I say I keep that in the vault and then uh, we got the the car show money and then uh, we got the you bet your life money yeah but I do yeah it's just my you know it's in a school day it's a school night I gotta go out and work uh, and and that's fine if that's who you are I suppose because I, I I still have there's a column I got out of it was an I'm not a column it was a fucking story on him from the L A Times uh, in ninety eight. And it was about how, like, the Tonight Show would end on Friday. You know, he'd, he'd tape the final Tonight Show on Thursday night, I think, or Friday night, and immediately fly to Vegas. He would do shows that night and then the next night. Then he would do a corporate on, like, Sunday, and then he'd be back in the Magic Club to run, to run monologue jokes on Sunday night and then back at work on Monday. And he never had a guest host. That was another thing. He never had a guest host on the fucking Tonight Show because he, he was like, I'm not losing this fucking gig. He got it into his fucking claws, and he wasn't going to fucking let it go. And there's part of me that genuinely admires the fucking the the just the fucking sheer fuck you of of working five days a week hard on that television show and then going out and doing stand up at night flying to vegas doing vegas gigs doing a corporate gig for fucking you know 150 grand uh and then flying home and then working out sunday night doing fucking you know it's it kind of sounds like a dream job to a certain extent but at the same time there's the lazy fuck in me who's like hey man if i've got 300 million dollars in the bank why am I going to do 15 minutes at the Comedy and Magic Club to try to run monologue jokes? I mean, I, I've got the gig at this point. I, no matter what I fucking do tomorrow, dancing, Edos, whatever the fuck, jaywalking, big head, whatever the fuck, uh, it's going to work because I'm the host of The Tonight Show, and that's fine. I don't know. I don't know. I Like I said, this is a whole lot more about me than it does about him because he's doing it right. You know, he has a career, and he will work until he he will die on stage like Dick Sean, and, and nothing wrong with that. Much better than dying in your fucking dark apartment wondering what the fuck happened. And uh, that's something I need to tell myself every goddamn day. Uh, because I've been absent. I haven't been here for three weeks, which is scary as fuck. Two weeks was bad. Three weeks is this. And you don't need to hear. Again, talk is cheap. Just change it. So I'll change it. Um, but I'm terrified. You know, I, I'm... Uh, I don't. I don't know how to explain to you what it is um I, i've tried and and look you know you have a handle on it you've heard it 
uh, uh, there's a, uh, my friend George, blind George, wrote me a note. And uh, he was very nice. He checked in on me. And George, I got your note. I didn't answer it because I don't answer anybody. I don't answer texts. I don't answer emails uh, because uh, I haven't done my homework. I haven't done my work. So I can't talk to anybody. I can't write them a note. I, I wrote my buddy Murph, who wrote me a note. And I wrote my buddy Fearful Jesuit, who checked in on me. Uh, because they, you know, they're, they're friends. Yeah, you're all friends. Everybody's a friend. Um, but they, you know, <laughs> Jesuit wrote me like four times or whatever, two times, three times, whatever. Um, I was supposed to go to his wedding last week and I didn't get to go. Um, you know, just, it was more about the Airbnb. I, I the flying as fine. It wasn't even about the cost or anything like that, you know, but it was, it was about the Airbnb more than anything that was just staying in somebody else's house seemed fucking ridiculous. Uh, you know, I could Uber, I could take cars and, and it was funny. Even, even Jesuit's like, you know, you can take the bus around town. I'm like, ah, what the fuck? What are you talking about? What are, kind of a hobo do you think I am? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little in, in the pocket about getting on a plane. You think I'm going to get in a fucking bus with some indigent motherfucker who hasn't changed his pants in six days and I'm not going to catch anything. Fuck that. I don't have a mask strong enough for the bus. Uh, if I, if I get in a bus wearing a mask, I'm going to have a shotgun and shoot the driver. That's it. That's the only way I board a bus with a mask on, uh, or board a bus period. I've never again, man. Uh, what was the last bus I was on? You know, when I was, when I was dating Jill, I would go, I would fly and then I would have to take a bus from Chicago to up where she lived. And then she would pick me up. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was ideal. That was a great thing. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, let's put it this way. Uh, I loved it at the time. I mean, I, I was, that was, I, I would, not, there's nothing I would have wanted to do more than I would have ran to Milwaukee. Uh, but now you look back and go, oh, that was bus time. That was fucking wasted. Oh, I'm so scared of this fucking thing that keeps blinking on and off. God, I'd like, part of me wants to stop the fucking show and hit save. But at the same fucking time, it's like, if I stop the goddamn show, it'll be like, oh man, I don't want to stop this. I got momentum. We got uncle Mo on our side. God damn it. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh, you know what? I never even finished telling you this. So Braun Strowman, strongest guy on the earth. Uh, oh, I never tell you about monks either. Fearful Jesuit. I was going to go to his wedding. Uh, and then uh, I wanted to go up there and ask the monks, can I join you? Can I be a monk? And they're like, yes. And I said, I want the monk outfit with the monk haircut. See, and I got to be honest with you. This bit won't be worth it either. I thought this was going to be an opening bit. And then we spun off. And now here we are, whatever, 40 minutes into the fucking show. And, uh, and sure enough, oh, holy shit, we're an hour into the show. Um... I, I, I don't really look at the screen because I don't want to know exactly where I'm at when I'm talking. Uh, and also, I'm, I'm freaking out watching this thing fucking blink at me. And I'm like, God damn it. If this fucking thing gets erased, I'm going to murder somebody. Uh, and I probably shouldn't commit that to audio, right? Hey, if this thing gets erased, I'm going to murder somebody. Although, I guess if I commit it to audio and it gets erased, nobody knows. <laughs> Except my neighbors who can hear me. Oh, man, my neighbor had a baby. Dudes, my fucking next door neighbor has a baby now. And so I'm recording the show. It's like fucking four in the morning. So I, I went and I, I heard crying and stuff in their house. So I went, I went over and, uh, you know, knocked on the door and they were very nice. And I said, hi. And it's so fucking weird because again, I'm just creepy single guy who lives in the building. Like I like to think, look, I, you guys know me. All right. So I like to think, uh, this will sound, this is going to sound dumb. I like to think I'm cool. Uh, or at least I'm normal. You know what I mean? I'm like a guy you'd want to live by and you might want to hang out with, um, but if you're young and you just see me, I'm, I'm fucking weirdo, man. I'm, I'm, I'm weirdo single guy in his single guy apartment who hasn't gone anywhere. Right. It's, it's a, it's a strange thing. And then the perception doesn't bother me, but I do wonder about it sometimes. Anyway, they have a baby and they're very nice. And uh, I hear the baby crying occasionally in the middle of the night or sometimes in the day. And uh, I didn't know if it was next door or if it was upstairs. I wasn't sure where this baby was located. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't have my my uh, uh, GBS on, so I couldn't find him. Um, but so I went next door, and I knocked on their door, and I, and and uh, they were very kind. They opened the door, and I go hi, and they said hey, what's up? I said hey, uh, and I, and I don't even know how to ask it, but I, I just go, did you guys have a baby? Which isn't that weird, right? If I don't know you, or I, I don't, because I look, they told me their names once, and I've forgotten them, and I don't know if they know my name anymore. It doesn't matter. Uh, cause I'll say hi to people as I walk to and from, but I don't have any friends in my apartment building. Um, you know, it's people I say hello to and that I know there's a couple of people who've been here forever. So I get to say hi to them, 
but new people, I don't have a fucking clue. Oh, dude, I almost fucked up a guy the other day. <laughs> I'll tell you this story in a second. Um, but I went and knocked on the door and I go, do you have a, do you guys have a baby? And, and I realized I looked like the fucking creep from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang who's scooping up children. You know what I mean? Like, I'm that fucking weirdo with the rat face and the top hat or whatever the fuck uh, who drives the cart. Doesn't he trick kids into getting into his fucking cart or scooping them up with a net or whatever the fuck? Uh, cause what the fuck do you care, old man? Why do you care if we have a baby? And, and again, the way it came out was I was like, hi, do you guys have a baby? And immediately, and I felt so terrible cause he just goes, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, you know, I, I know he cries sometimes and da, 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 da. And now, now I'm fucking Hawkeye in that episode of mash in the truck. It's like, you shut that fucking, shut that baby up and they fucking kill it. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy who made my neighbors kill their baby. Uh, I just wanted to check in because I, here's why, because this is why I asked. I said, do you have a baby? And they're like, oh my gosh, yes, we're sorry. Uh, we know he cries sometimes. I don't know if it's too loud. And I go, no, oh my God, no. I said, dude, uh, I'm checking because I want to know if I'm too loud. He goes, what do you mean? I go, dude, I go, I'm up late at night. Sometimes I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing a lot of yelling. I go, because uh, I'm talking, I don't want to say I do a show because then they're like, what show? And they're like, oh, it's a podcast. And then I have to explain, I haven't done one in three weeks. And they're like, we hate you. So I have to go, hey, sometimes I'm up yelling in the middle of the night. I get that. I go, but also I'm singing in the shower and I'm loud and I have loud music on. I go, plus I'm up late at night watching movies. And sometimes I, if I don't have my earbuds in and he goes, no, oh my God, no, we don't even notice. I go, you sure? He goes, oh yeah, no, absolutely. I go, all right, well, listen to me. I go, I just, I am checking because I just, I want you to know that if it's ever too much or if it's ever too loud, just tell me please. And I'll more than happy stop I'll, whatever you need me to do and he's and and he's like oh my god no please no you're great and i go oh my god no you're great you know what i mean it's that thing where it's like now we're having a contest you're great no you're the best no you're the best oh my god stop you're awesome um because i didn't know what to say because i because again it should have just stopped at no you're good no again okay great but instead i go okay well i just want to make sure because i know i sing and i sing really loud and i i'm yelling in the middle of the night and so now i'm like running down this litany of bullshit that i do and then i'm like wait a minute you're making yourself sound like a bad neighbor you're not a bad fucking neighbor what the fuck is your issue here um so uh so i'm glad they had a baby and congratulations to them that's good news right uh but then there's all these new young people in my building and i have a pool and uh, there were a couple of nice ladies out in bikinis the other day. That was fun to look at. Uh, but also, I can't, you know, I all I can do is catch a sideways glance because it's not like you can sit in there. Because, <laughs> again, old and creepy single guy. So instead, what I do is I have to close the kitchen blinds uh, three quarters of the way and then position my head just so so I can see them through the slats. <laughs> Boy, that's not creepy, huh? That's not creepy at all. Go ahead and pull that move off. They love it. Uh, but here's what I did the other day. I was doing my laundry and there were kids playing football at the pool. And, uh, and this is how I've grown as a person folks, because they were throwing a football and it was like one dude, uh, there was one dude in the pool, one dude on the outside of the pool out uh, on the far side. And one guy near me, like right by my apartment. And, uh, he had his back to me and dudes, I wanted so fucking badly they throw him a pass and I, in my head, cause he was tall and he was young, but he was skinny. So I probably would have hurt him. But I, in my brain, I was like, Oh man, I want to jack this kid. Like I just wanted to fucking run and blast him as with that, with the pass on its way to him. <laughs> but then, cause I'm like, I even went, I go, Oh man, that would be fucking hilarious. I go, you know what? That would actually be a funny story for the show. And then I went, yeah, but that would be a story you'd be telling from a jail cell because if you snap this kid's fucking neck because he's built like a fucking light pole, you would be going to prison immediately because you turned his fucking cervical spine into a fucking sculpture of modern art. And, uh, and so I, I thought about it and I was step standing there, they were throwing the ball around. So that's also creepy old man. Who's just kind of standing there like eh, 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 watching men in bathing suits, throw a ball around. And, uh, and finally the kid turned around cause I guess he could sense my presence about, I was, cause I was about 15 steps behind him. Uh, but I was standing there with a laundry basket and, uh, and, and then he kind of turned around and he looked at me and I go, Hey, what's up? Uh, and he's like, nothing. How you doing? And I go, good. And I just walked into my laundry room because in my brain, I want, and I wanted to tell him, dude, I, I wanted to just fucking tackle you. But also that sounds even creepier, dude. You have no, you have no idea how I was just sitting there pondering fucking smashing you into the pool. It would have been fucking awesome. Right. And he would have been like, no, that wouldn't have been awesome at all, dude. You fucking insane person. What is your issue, man? Um, 
And I, I can't blame him. I mean, why not? I'd be upset, too, if somebody came up and fucking blasted me into the fucking pool. Somebody I've never met or seen in my life. But Jesus Christ, that would have been funny as hell. God damn, I wanted to do it. Just fucking run up. And, and I mean, because it would have been textbook, man. Shoulder in the small of his back. His fucking head would have flown back. And I, dude, I would have absolutely separated him from the ball. That ball would have gone fucking flying. And would I have recovered the fumble? I don't know. But it would have been satisfying enough to just fucking feel the reverberation of the stick as it rammed through his fucking rib cage. <laughs> what a mess. Uh, all right, so let me finish this dumb bit that I started thinking that it would be the dumb bit that started the show, but now it's extended all the way to the goddamn fucking middle or whatever the fuck. I, uh, I, so I was going to say, here's what I was going to say, because uh, I haven't talked to you guys, again, like I've mentioned in three weeks, uh, because I went to be a monk at uh, Jesuit's compound. I went up there and I go, I want to be a monk. And they're like, all right, cool. And I said, but look, I don't want to wear the monk clothes and I don't want to get the fucking haircut. Uh, I don't want to do any of this bullshit. And then they said, uh, they said, okay, but there is one thing you'll have to do. And I said, I just told you, I don't want to do any of the monk stuff. And they're like, well, that's fine. But if you want to be a monk, if you want to be considered to be a monk, you don't, we're telling you, you don't have to wear the robes. You don't have to be barefoot. You don't have to stomp on the potatoes or whatever the fuck. You don't have to have fucking um, <laughs> callous juice from a monk foot. You don't have to do any of this bullshit. That's fine. We agree. We don't have to cut your hair. You give it two weeks, a two week monk trial. And if you don't like it, you're, mon- you're monkey back. And I said, cool. But they said, but there is one thing you'll have to do. And I said, what is it? And they said, you got to take a vow of silence. And, uh, and so I did. And that's why I hit up at their compound for the last three weeks and decided I didn't want to be a monk. And I came back. See, that was the, that was where my brain was going when I started that dumb silliness in the beginning of the show. Uh, and then what happened? We spiraled off into a bunch of other goddamn things. You see what we did? Uh, because I put pressure on myself where I'm like, cause it gets another thing, dude, the, the longer I take to do a fucking show in my brain, then I'm like, uh, oh my God, it's gotta be the best show you ever did. Oh, our people are going to be so fucking mad if you if you do a fucking show that's bad now. What if you do a show and it's fucking terrible? And they'll be like, what? We waited this long for this garbage? And then they'll be mad and they'll be and they'll fucking boot me out of the fucking show club or whatever the fuck. And I'm like, no, please don't take me off your podcast rotation. Uh, but it's my own fault. That's what happens. So I so then I sit here and then I'm like, well, it's got to be good. It's got to be the best show I ever did. And it's also going to be nine hours. I got to do a nine hour show. That's fucking amazing. What if I did that? And then part of me is like, well, no, you don't have to do that, man. What if you just did like a good half hour show? And I'm like, people would tell me to get fucked. That's what would happen, man. Uh, fucking ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, man. And, and I, I, I had a birthday since I last talked to you guys. Some of you know this, some of you don't. Uh, my birthday was in July, at the end of July, July 29th. And, uh, and it was amazing. Uh, I had a fantastic, yeah, I had a, I had a very fun, good birthday, but at the same time it was, um, you know, it's, it's, it's another year older, you know what I mean? And, and another year where you just go, all right, well, it, it's fine and it's fun and it's great. But then if you sit and you think and you go, all right, I'm this old and what have I done? And I, I, I'm normally not a guy who does that. I'm normally not a guy who gets lost in what did you do? What have you done? What should you have done uh, for very long? I do get lost in it. Certainly it comes up. I, I, I've, I beat myself senseless a lot of times over Jesus Christ, man, this is it. This is all you've done. Uh, and when I was going to therapy, I found ways to make them into triumphs. You know, the, the very fact that I'm able to make a living sort of off of comedy and, uh, it pays the bulk of my bills and this is really cool. And then Twitch and, uh, all of those things are great. But then, but then you sit and you think, all right, but yeah, but you're old, man. Like you're gonna, you're gonna get cancer because you're, everybody gets cancer. It's going to show up. You know, it is because <laughs> there's nothing you think yourself when cancer shows up and it will, because it will, there's no doubt. And I don't have any health insurance, man. So like, do I just, do I just fucking moan and die? Is that what happens? I don't know anymore. Cause it's funny. You go online and, uh, and virtually everybody, when anything happens to them, anything at all, oh no, my cat needs a liver. Uh, and they start a GoFundMe or, or, you know, and I've, I've been the beneficiary of a GoFundMe for my car. And uh, we did one for Lily because of her eye. And, and I know some of you out there have had GoFundMes that have funded and, and or needed to be funded for family or friends. And it's uh, isn't that fucking scary when you really look at the depth and the breadth of Go, GoFundMe right now? I'm, I'm they pay every fucking medical expense in this fucking country. I'm going to I'm going to say that GoFundMe is the third biggest insurance company in America. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And that's only because I think Blue Cross and Humana have one and two locked the fuck up. But Jesus Christ, man, Aetna, maybe, maybe. Uh, but but fucking GoFundMe is is 
definitely in the top four or five insurance companies in this fucking country. That's insane. And, uh, and in my brain, I thought, well, you're old, you know what I mean? And eventually you're going to need to go fund me for whatever, for your gut. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be something. I'm going to have some kidney bullshit. And, it's gonna, and that's literally what it's going to say on my GoFundMe. It's just going to say kidney bullshit. Because, because when cancer shows up, as I've mentioned, and it's common, we all know it. Cancer is just always outside the door. It's just lurking. Cancer cancer's like fucking Shane Stant. It's just waiting for me to carry it out of my house and take me out at the knees. Ha <laughs> ha, smash. Uh, Tanya Harding has told cancer to come and visit me and find me because cancer wants to win a medal. It doesn't think I deserve a medal. You don't think I deserve a medal, cancer? Why don't you back the fuck off? Who are you to tell me who should medal and who shouldn't? I'm drinking water. I, uh... So I'm 54. And, uh... And, and that's... I You know, it's not... It's just, it's just strange, I guess, is what I would say. I, I don't know. I, it's not bad, but, but here's why it's weird, all right? Because I, f- my entire life, uh, from when I was a kid, uh, I, I thought, you know, I mean, 54 sounds like a grown-up. There's no doubt about it. That's, that sounds like that's, that's the age of a grown-up or a fucking a father, a husband, a, a, a homeowner, a man, you know, and, and, uh, two of those I'll never be. Okay. <laughs> I'm never going to be a fucking homeowner. That's never happening. I'm never going to be a father. Uh, I'm not sure I have the bullets in the gun, let alone, am I going to meet anybody who's ever going to fucking want to see my bullets ever again? Who knows? Uh, but then there's, there's a husband, which I tried and failed. And, uh, and then there's a man and, uh, and that's, you know, that's, that's the real challenge for me because my, my definition of the word man was never really shaped by example because what was supposed to be a man in my life was a fucking drunken heap who was abusive to my mom and, and abusive to us and just, just a bad guy all around. So I, I've had to figure out for myself what it meant. I've had to stagger through life trying to figure out what a man should or shouldn't do. And, and, and I've been well-meaning in the attempt, certainly, but I've been clumsy in the attempt. I've, I've been heartfelt in my attempt to be a man, but also fucking toxic in my attempts to be a man by, by uh, hitting, hitting fucking dudes for no reason. And, and I, I laugh when I think about it. You know what I mean? You're like, the, I, I always joke that the movie Thief is my dad because it was... It was about a guy who who literally said, I'm the last guy in the world you want to fuck with. And he solved every problem with fists and a gun. And if things didn't go his way, he just blew everything to fucking smithereens and started over later. And I was like, yeah, that's a good way to be. That's not a healthy thing to think when you're 14 years old. But that's what I thought, you know. And uh, and so I've I've meandered through a life trying to be uh, whatever I think a man was or could be. I, I, I'm 54 and I have I have no idea what it means to be a man. And it's weird being 54. I'll tell you this because I, I have since the age of 10, I thought I would die at 54. I think I said that in some early episodes of this podcast because 54, when you're 10 years old, man, that just sounds so impossibly far away. It's, it's four decades of life yet to live. And, and, and after those decades, you think to yourself, you're going to be exhausted. You're going to be accomplished and you're going to be ready for the end. You literally, when you're 10, you're like 54. Oh yeah, that's it. Woo. I will have done whatever my life's work intended to be. And now it's, it's all gravy from here. So we'll see what happens. And, uh, and I'm, I'm 54, man. And I am not accomplished and, uh, I, I'm not truly exhausted. I can play at it, but I'm not cause I haven't done enough to be exhausted by. And, uh, and I am absolutely not ready for the end. I'm not saying it's coming, uh, but I'm saying if it does and we have to go fund me, you know, when cancer shows up, you know, you know, I, I'm look truthfully, whenever I see anybody do the GoFundMe for cancer and it's so terrible, I love a picture of like their friend in bed with, with like a, you know, a fucking giant rig strapped to them or some terrible stuff that they're going through. And it's awful. I feel so bad. And, and man, if I got to get a GoFundMe on my way out, I, I think, I think it's going to be for fucking hookers and plane tickets, right? Don't you, don't you, they shouldn't be like a crazy international fucking, hookers and drugs and goodbye party for anybody I've ever met who cares to see me again. 
just like a farewell tour, like do that like a band, like when a band is like, ah, this is it, this is the final countdown, this is our farewell tour. I, I can't, I'll have a GoFundMe for a farewell tour where I'll just get to go fucking hang out with the people I love and see them and have fun. Now, I, we don't need to bring hookers into it, certainly, and drugs, which I mentioned, but it came to mind, it came to mind where I was like, well, if you know you're done, why not do all of it? Why not just fucking do all of it, man? I, I, I've struggled to be whatever a man should be, whatever I thought a man had to be. You know what I mean? Um, I, don't, I don't know if I'll ever be uh, accomplished or, or, or and I certainly will never be ready for the end. I've done things that I thought a man should do, seriously. But then <laughs> when it was done, I found out they were the exact opposite of what the situation called for. So it's like, oh, wait, I should punch this guy in the face. Hey, wait, what if I put my elbow through this window? And uh, oh, no, that's not the, that's not the best move. That's not what a man should do or would do or could do. Uh, and I've, you know, I've I've hurt people who cared for me and I've cared for people who hurt me. And and it's always, you know, when when. I always say I'm as old as I've ever been, but 54 for some reason, that number is, uh, that's a big deal for me because I always thought I was going to die when I was a kid at 54. And my birthday this year was fucking great. You know, I talk about, like I said, a farewell tour, going out and seeing people and, and uh, you know what I did on my birthday this year? Like I've, in the past, I've had cake um, with with exes who weren't exes at the time. I've gone on trips. I've spent I've spent birthdays on stage. I've been in in Philadelphia. I did a show on my birthday. Uh, I've done I've been in ballparks. Um, I've been in Philadelphia at the Phillies game on my birthday. Uh, I've I've been on stages. I've I've been in people's homes, and and I've been lucky enough to to spend my birthday in myriad ways. And and you know what I did this year, man? I didn't do a fucking thing. I did nothing. My brother said he wanted to buy me lunch for my birthday. So I was like, all right, man, what do you want? And he's like, well, you pick. It's your birthday. And uh, I said, all right, well, like, you know, I don't, I don't know where we'll go. It's, you know, there's a few places. And he's like, all right, well, let's think about it. And I, and I said, you know what? Let's do this, dude. You know, there's a lot of day baseball that day. He goes, oh, okay. I said, why don't you just come over and we'll get some food and we'll watch baseball all day. And he's like, fuck, yeah, that sounds great to me. And that's exactly what I did. He uh, he came over at like fucking 11 a.m. And the socks were already on. And and the Phillies were on too. We, we, we flipped back and forth. We're just flipping through games. And uh, we, we bought a sushi feast that was fucking ridiculous. It was, it was so much sushi. It was crazy. And, uh, and we just, we just hung out. And then, and then the Phillies won their game on a walk-off grand slam, which was incredible on my birthday to see Brad Miller hit a fucking walk-off bomb. And, and it was great because we had rooted for the Sox earlier and then we turned on the Phillies and we were rooting for the Phillies. And so Lenny was also like rooting for the Phillies just cause they were home and, and, uh, and the Phillies came from behind like twice to tie the game. And then it looked like, then they gave up a bunch they runs in the ninth and I'm like, Oh fuck man, come on. And uh, they had to, the Phillies literally, here's how bad it was. They had to pinch hit two pitchers. They had to send two pitchers up to pinch hit, which was fucking insane. I, you don't do that in the National League. It was fucking terrible. And yet they fought through. They fought through, and then they fought through. And then, uh, and sure enough, man, they fucking, in the ninth inning, Brad Miller hits a walk-off grand slam. And we're like, dude! Like the, He hit it, we're like, yeah! And going crazy. And uh, God damn, it was great. And then, and then Lenny was supposed to leave. He was like, oh, I got to take off, man. I'm, I'm going to do something. But then we started just hanging out after the game. We're talking, we're eating sushi, whatever. And then he said, uh, I said, hey, man, I have to stream online. Like, are you really leaving? And he's like, well, you know, I, I don't have to go right now. And I go, would you want to sit in for just a little bit of, of the birthday stream? And he's like, yeah, that'd be fucking cool. I said, all right, great. So I, I and we did. I streamed on Twitch with uh, me and Lenny. It's still available. If you go to my Twitch channel, you can see it because because. We just fucked around. We joked and we goofed around. We, I don't think we played a game. We just chatted. Uh, I had whiskey um, because a listener, Murph, who I mentioned earlier, he had sent me for Christmas a bunch of whiskeys, and I had brought most of them over to Pat's house, <laughs> and Pat chugged them. Uh, Murph said it was okay. I asked. I go, look, you know, I don't drink this. Can I bring a few of these over to Pat's house? And he said, sure. Um, but I saved one. It was called uh, 
cask mates or something. It was a Jameson special blend or something. And, and, uh, and I said, you know what, let's have that. Let's have that on the air. So we, we, we grabbed it and, uh, Lenny and I split, it was just a little airplane bottle, you know? And, uh, I said, I don't know. I don't know how to drink this. And, uh, I said, am I supposed to put it over ice or whatever? And then he's like, not this kind of whiskey, dude. Fuck that. He goes, you should drink it neat. And I go, nah. I go, I don't, I'm not going to be able to appreciate it. I don't even know what that is. I go, I'll tell you what. He goes, well, I drink it neat. I go, all right, well you drink it neat and I'll drink it over ice. Just get me a cup with one ice cube in it. And, uh, and we did, we split the bottle, poured it. It wasn't much. Um, and then we got to talking and, and, uh, we started telling stories about being kids and telling stories about our little brothers. And it's stories I've told on here, stories of the domino fight when we were throwing shit at my brothers, uh, stories of, of, uh, what my brothers are like now and, and what to do about it. <laughs> it was just, it was, and, uh, and I started laughing and I can't, I said this fucking thing I was talking about in Jim Morrison's book, no one here gets out alive. He talks about how mean his brother was and his brother used to pin him to the ground and he would drink a bunch of chocolate milk and then his spit would get all fucking like gluey and he would spit it over Jim Morrison's mouth and then suck it back up. Like he would, he would try to spit it in his face, but then he would suck it back up. And, uh, and I was like, Oh really, man? I go, guess what we did? We threw fucking dominoes at my brothers and fucking opened cuts on their heads. We just, we made them walk past a door, an open bedroom door, like ducks in a shooting gallery. And we would throw shit at them. <laughs> Fuck you, Morrison. You think you went through a fucking bad times? Talk to the little guys in the Schmidt family. You fuck. <laughs> It was so fun just talking and laughing and fucking around. And I got gifts from people. People were so nice. I got uh, uh, the lovely Bridget sent me a couple of books. She sent me a Carrie Fisher uh, series of Carrie Fisher essays and writings. And then a a book a guy wrote about plants during the pandemic uh, and about the properties of psychedelics and things like. So that was pretty cool. Um, It it was it was just nice of people to think of me and send me stuff. Our our buddy Michael from Boston sent me a 12 pack of Vimto, uh, which, you know, is my favorite soda Vimto from uh, from England. Uh, I had it in Kuwait, but God damn, it's so good. It's just this again, it's black currant soda and it's fucking it. It tastes like Jesus's tears. It is so fucking good, man. It is great. And, And I got a 12 pack of it. So I put that in the fridge. That was great to open that up. And, uh, and another gift I got that was incredible from our friend Hannah, uh, in England. And she had told me it was coming. She said, you know, keep an eye out for it. I don't know when it'll get there, but it got, it got there. I was very lucky. And I opened it on stream and, uh, I was playing a game called ghost of Tsushima, which is a samurai game where you're basically running around as a samurai and trying to save Japan from the Mongol hordes and, uh, super sweet. And you get all these different outfits and you get all these fucking costumes. You get your katana fucking deadly. You get uh, all of these. It's just amazing. It's an, it's an, and it is a gorgeous game. It is beautiful. All of the scenery as well as the clothing. It is all, and I I'm playing it in Japanese. So there's English subtitles. I I'm because you know me, I'm fascinated by Japan and, uh, and I opened this box that, that Hannah sent me and she sent me a, uh, a, a, it's a samurai mask. I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's um, samurais would wear uh, a mask over their mouth and and nose, like on the bottom half of their face, and it would be made out of metal or or really dense plaster, and it protected them in battle. You know, they would, and because it also it was fierce, it was fierce looking, and they would fucking wear it. And uh, in Ghost of Tsushima, you win them, you find them. They're all over the place. You win them in battles. And she sent me one, and I put it. And dudes, it is glorious. Uh, if you look right now at your at your iPod, you'll see me wearing it, and and it is fucking beautiful. And it, it's like it's funny because like I want to wear it out, like I, I want to wear it as my mask. <laughs> you know when I go out now because we got to fucking wear masks everywhere again here in in L.A. and wherever the fuck you guys are, I'm sure. Uh, but boy, it makes me want to wear it. I want to wear it and just go. Well, I got a mask on. What are you talking about? I got a mask. And then part of me, someone's like, "Well, why don't you just put your mask on underneath this and wear this over the mask?" And I'm like, "That is a fucking great idea." Now, have I done it yet? No, because just like smashing a fucking teenager in the back in a fucking swimming pool, I'm not sure it's the best idea. It's fun. It sounds like it would be pretty fun and great and cool to do. But at the same time, I've got to admit, uh, I I don't know if that would be the best move just yet. 
We'll see what happens because because I, I got if it goes if it gets any more fucking bananas out there and there's more people yelling at grocery stores and supermarkets and shit like that. I am uh, I'm going to do everything I can to wear this fucking thing into public and maybe maybe I'll get a fucking katana too. I don't know. Maybe I'll get that. Um, but it was amazing. It was it was. Look, man, you get older and and all your birthdays are. Cause I'm not even I, that dude, you know what I mean? You know that I'm not. I'm like, ah, oh, happy birthday to me. I'm not. I I I. I loved it when I had somebody to spend it with. You know, Karen did whatever she could to to make it special when we were together, and then uh, you know when I was with Jill, Jill, Jill absolutely because she you know she declared birthday week when she had her birthday. And so she would say to me, well, you need to have a birthday week too. And she would, she got me this peanut butter and jelly cake, which is still to this day, the best cake I've ever eaten. And, uh, she asked a baker to make it. And, and, um, I've been extremely lucky to have people in my life who have tried to make my birthday special. And, uh, and though this year was spent again in the same apartment I've been in for the past 18 months, uh, having my brother there and uh and baseball and the Phillies and um it w- it was it was one of my favorites it was really just a fantastic time and I'm I'm very happy for it and I and I got to be again I'm a little weirded out coming to you guys so late as I've mentioned and and talk is cheap actions speak louder than so many fucking words that I vomited to a microphone so I will do everything to be on time from now on. I will move heaven and earth to give you a weekly show. Uh, and I hope you'll stick with me. That would be really great. And I've said this speech a million times and you've all been kind enough. Uh, and look, you might not have stuck with me. I don't know. But anybody who's hearing this part of this show, please recognize how much I appreciate the very fact that you've come back after three weeks just to hear what I have to say. And and I tried to keep as much sad sack as I could out of it. And I didn't want to go into, oh, well, you know, it's uh, it's dark and you, you wind up thinking about this and your mortality comes into sharp relief. And and uh, I mean, all of that is true for any one of us. I think I think the past 18 months have led all of us to question our mortality because you were you were a germ away from sucking ventilator cock and fucking shuffling off this fucking mortal coil with with no rhyme or reason behind it. And, and because of the incivility of your fellow citizens or, or human beings, the, the discourteousness of them not wearing a small piece of cloth on their face to protect you. It's, I have a lot to say about that, but I did not want to say it this time because Jesus fucking Christ, how many times, how many weeks in a row can you talk about the same goddamn thing? And it just, it just seems to me that for, 65 weeks give or take a three week break or two week break I have been talking about the fucking divide in in our country between people who want to help and people who don't and I don't need your explanation and I don't need everybody going well though you don't have my body my choice and I don't you (laughs) fuck that man fuck you for weaponizing that term when you fucking spent years and years fucking ridiculing it you fucking pathetic jag offs it drives me crazy I don't get it this 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 country of people threatening doctors that we know where you'll live and we'll find you because they don't want to wear a mask And, and look I, I, tr- all all fucking bullshit aside, I think the masks are stupid sometimes. I think the fact that you told us to take them off in May and now you're telling us to put them back on in August is pretty fucking dumb. You should have never said to take them off in May. But because you were trying to rush through it and get it fixed and you don't know because nobody knows what the fuck is going on. Nobody has any idea about how to fix it or how not to fix it. Nobody is seeing the un fucking the, the, the burden the costs that are on the horizon. And I'm not talking about just fucking unemployment and paying people and whatever the fuck and all that shit. I'm talking about, you want businesses to stay open with people not wearing masks or, or you want they're talking about a vaccine passport, which is fine. I get that. That makes complete sense. Uh, however, are you going to let businesses, are you going to give them money or are they going to find a way to hire security to keep people from coming into the store unless they're vaccinated? I don't, I don't think you are. And I'm talking like, I'm not talking like a 68 year old retired guy with a stick on his hip. Who's going to try to keep fucking four teenagers from going in there and buying candy. And they're going to fucking just run past him and do what the fuck they want. 
you know, if you're going to still keep asking baristas and fucking grocery store checkers and baggers and fast food workers to be the thin blue fucking line from people and try to enforce this shit, then you're just asking for more goddamn trouble. Now you're just paring everybody the fuck off. And, and I don't, again, I don't fucking understand. Just wear the fucking mask and get vaccinated. That's it. It's that, it's not that fucking hard. Yeah, you know, we don't know the long-term effects. Well, hey, what, do you, what the fuck do you care about? The, you know what the long-term effects of death are? Death. You get the fucking COVID and you die. And look, yes, the odds are you won't die. But it's all these fucking people who don't think anything as bad is going to happen to them. But it's also people who are like, it's just about, they don't want to be told what the fuck to do. You know, you know this fucking, this whole country is filled with Spicoli and his buddies. Literally, they, they all walk into All-American Burger and they immediately take their fucking shirts off. Why? What? What the fuck? Where are your shirts? What are you doing? And then we all have to be Brad. Hey, you guys had shirts on when you came in here. Something happened to him, man. Ha <laughs> ha Fucking Spicoli's just fucking doing whatever they want. No mask down around their chin, nose out. Nobody fucking cares. And Brad comes over and he's like, you see that sign? No shoes, no shirt, no dice. Ha <laughs> ha. And he goes, yeah, learn it. Know it. Live it. And Spicoli goes, he's the full hot orator. And they and he puts his shirt back on because even fucking Spicoli cares about citizens more than you cunts who won't wear masks and won't get vaccinated. What the fuck, man? Even a stoner who lives in a smoke filled van cares more about people than you do. You fucking humps. God damn it. So it's 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 a weird it's a, just a weird time for everybody and all of us. And, and, you know, I spent a birthday in the pandemic last year and I got, I had another birthday here and I've had a Christmas during it. And, and I don't know. And like I said, I don't want to wear the fucking mask anymore. I got no interest in it. When I go to the gym, I don't wear a mask. I, I work out without a fucking mask on. I'll tell you that right now, because everybody there has been fucking vaccinated. But when I go into a store, I've been vaccinated, but I wear a fucking mask. You know why? Just because I don't want to make fucking Benny and Alice give me the side eye and go, could you please put a mask on? Now, this is a true story. I have a friend, and he goes to Starbucks every day. And when they announced the mask mandate here a couple of weeks ago, it was it was so dramatic, too. It was like on a Thursday, but they said it won't go into effect until 11.59 p.m. on Saturday night. Well, get fucked. What, so, so what? So nobody's going to get sick the next two days if we don't have masks on what the fuck is your issue it's all this fucking confusing bullshit and that's why people get pissed off you're telling me if i if so if i if i'm not wearing a mask at 11 58 i'm fine but then i gotta put a mask on at 11 59 it's it's just so dumb also i go into a restaurant i gotta wear a mask to go into a restaurant i gotta wear a mask to sit down but then i can take my mask off to drink water and eat food it's all stupid i get it but look, it's not about you, and it's not about how stupid it is. It's about the waiter or the waitress or the manager or the bartender who have to deal with your bullshit. Wear the fucking mask. Don't be a fucking jagoff. I don't. I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand it. I think it's stupid too. But man, oh man, the 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 fucking people that lose their minds over it and just and continue to lose their fucking minds it's not just about you man don't be you know be spicoli be fucking spicoli yeah you take the mask up but when they fucking come to you and brad gives you the sign just fucking wear it spicoli cares more about this country than you fucking cunts and uh and i i don't know i i don't I don't try to be, a, I, I don't want to be the guy who's like, you should do this or you should, do, I, we, I, we've been that guy. And that's one of the, another reason why I haven't talked to you in a while, because I'm like, what else is there to say? What else is there to say? I don't fucking know. I don't know. I got no idea. So, uh, I had an amazing birthday. It was great. I was very happy. Uh, 54, which again, with is strange with the 40 year old boy, obviously, but, um, but I am so grateful to anybody who thought of me and I'm so uh, proud that anyone out there cares. And it makes me happy every single time I think about the fact that anyone would give a flying fuck about anything that's ever come out of my mouth. And, and I want to get back out there and I want to do shows and, and uh, you know, I want to stop lying low and, and, and then I pivot and in an hour I'll be like, you know what? I like lying low. It's pretty cool to lie low and do nothing. Isn't that great? No, it isn't man. What the fuck? 
I just want to put on my samurai mask and get on a fucking plane and fly around. And uh, you know, because I say at fifty four, I, I still I still have no real re- uh, fucking idea what it means to be a man. None. Um, but I can tell you this: I might not have any real idea of what it means to be a man. I might be a fifty four year old boy with a fucking samurai mask on. But it doesn't matter. There's no true definition of what a man is. The thing that we've thought for years is, you know, a a man is two fisted. A man plants, a man works, a man raises a family, a man. It's it's all of those things contribute to who you are and what you do. But but as I've said on other shows so many times, I I think the most important thing, it's not it's not even it's not even about being a man. It's about being a human. It's about recognizing there are other people in the world besides you. It's about recognizing that the, your actions do influence others and, and being kind and wearing a mask and, or being kind and, and, uh, and doing what you can for somebody who needs your help is, is the best reflection of how to be a human being. You know, I was, I was telling you about my friend, he, he goes to a Starbucks every day. So they announced that bullshit about the 11:59 p.m. masks, right? So that's Saturday night. He goes Sunday, and he gets out of his car. He forgets his mask, and he's like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" He goes back and grabs it. Comes into the Starbucks, and uh, the staff is all masked again because that had been, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, if they were vaccinated, they didn't have to be. But now they're all masked, and he looks around, and there's like four guys, and none of them are wearing masks. They're talking. They're just fucking walking around. And uh, my friend goes to the counter, and he goes, "Hey," and she says, "Hi." And uh, he says, uh, oh, yeah, everybody's got the masks back on, huh? And she goes, yeah, yeah, it's, it's mandatory now. And he goes, well, what about uh, these guys? And this woman, barista, who obviously doesn't want to be a career barista, or maybe she does. I don't fucking know. She's a Starbucks employee, though. And she just she looks at my friend and she goes, I'm tired. And I, I think that says it all. You know, when you when you don't wear a mask, when you 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 choose to be selfish and you choose to not look at it from the perspective of the other person, you're you're just contributing to the absolute exhaustion of the human race and the fatigue that is set in in trying to deal with people when when they act like toddlers. And and why why would you ever want to be part of the problem? Why wouldn't you want to be the best human being you could be? to make sure that that other human being was able to have some sort of semblance of grace or decency in their life. Just be kind. It's not that difficult. You know, I, I, I say I don't know what it means to be a man, but I know what it means to be a human. And all that takes is kindness and recognition that everyone around you matters. That's it. And, and as I enter my death year... <laughs> 54 man i it just it seemed so far away as a kid and i i thought that was gonna be it i thought that was when i was fucking finished i thought that's when the clock would absolutely stop ticking man and and uh man fuck that i it can't right i don't want it to i'm i'm going to consider it my death year until i hit double nickels (laughs) But I, I, you know, I have to admit, I spun myself up. I, I mentioned earlier, our friend Blind George wrote me and he said, hey, man, I, you know, is this just the standard crippling anxiety or if it's something different, you know, let me know. <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I've never heard it put like that before. I, did, I didn't know it was crippling anxiety. I certainly didn't know it was standard, standard issue. Uh, I didn't know I got it right, right from the factory, but I guess I did. Uh, although I've done pretty good at installing it over the years. Um. And like I said, it snowballs. You know, you're, I'm anxious because I didn't do a show, and then I'm anxious because a week goes by and two weeks goes by, and then I'm anxious because it better be a great fucking show, and I'm anxious because it better be a long, great fucking show, and 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 it's it's just nonsense. It's all nonsense. I can't be like that in my death year. <laughs> I can't. I need to make my death year the resolution year. I got to put on my samurai mask and tackle the fucking world, right? You know, it's funny. I I. Uh, I'm alone a lot, you know, and, and so I, I, to avoid work, I do anything. I, I do puzzles on Sporkle and Yardbarker. I, I, 
I look in, into Facebook, I, I see comments from people and I go, Oh, I wonder what ever happened to that guy or what happened to this person. And, and, uh, you know, I, I found a listener to the show. There was, uh, there's a guy named Paul Weeks and Paul, you know, he, uh, he's, he was around from the jump. He's been around from the jump. And then, uh, his name was in a comment and I clicked on him. I'm like, Oh, I wonder what Paul's doing these days. I haven't heard from Paul in a while. Oh, there's, there's a reason I haven't heard from Paul in a while. Uh, we lost Paul. Um, during the pandemic and uh, and I, I it just <laughs> guys my age he's got kids and and Jesus Christ man there's there's nothing weirder because social media is such bullshit it's America's yearbook it's 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 infinite high school uh, but it also has a real uh, unique way of of bringing you back to real life pretty fucking quick and uh and and I saw that and 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 it made me think of other people who've listened to the show. You know, we lost Stephen Bray. I, I've talked about him and of course my lovely Maki, my friend, and uh and there's a listener named Chris Cade who was a fantastic friend, a uh, great guy, and then he had a massive like a stroke or something, man, and then he couldn't communicate and he would send me notes and I felt so terrible because I didn't I didn't know how to re- reply to him, so in my brain, I'm like, you know, what? I got to figure out a way to reply to Chris. Like, it's been, you know, I don't know how fucking long, but he finally, it, it just his his letters and things. Like, I, I had talked to his sister at one point when all the shit hit the fan, uh, and then I, you know, I go to his page and uh, we lost Chris during the pandemic. He had a second episode, and and uh, and and that was that. Uh, and, and man, just, just to, is, is there anything weirder than scrolling through mortality? It's, it's the strangest feeling, especially in, in the year that of, of course my death year is upon us. And so I'm like, holy shit, Chris is younger than me. We lost Chris. We lost Paul. We, 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 um, and then, and I'm, I'm sure some of you saw this story. There, there's a comedian his name is Trevor Moore, and he was in the sketch group Whitest Kids You Know, and I didn't know them. I didn't know him from that at all. Uh, but I knew him from his Comedy Central special in 2015, back uh, you know one of those years when I was considering, hey, maybe I should go do some stand up and learn what's going on out there. And well, who's this new guy? I'll give him a day in court. And then I sat there slack jawed watching how brilliant he was on his uh, show, uh, what was the name of the special? High, was it the Dr- High on Drugs? I can't remember, I don't even remember the fucking name of it. All I know, there's a clip on it, you've got to find it if you haven't seen it, it's called The Ballad of Billy John. It's a song he wrote, because he wrote songs, he wrote sketches, he wrote, he was just a unique performer. And uh, The Ballad of Billy John basically sums up the internet, and this was in 2015, this is six years ago, he nailed it. And it's just gotten worse, but he saw it. You know, we, we, we all saw it, but nobody crystallized it like he did in the performance, uh, the song and the video for the Ballad of Billy John. You should look it up. And uh, Trevor Moore was 41 years old. And about a week and a half ago or so, he, uh, he, he died in a freak accident. I, I don't know any details. I don't need to know them. All we know is we've lost Trevor. And, uh, he's not, he's not someone I met. He's not, I have tangential friends. Like I know Jonah and Jonah knew Trevor and, and, uh, you know, I knew people who knew him and I always heard that he was a great guy. And also everybody raved about his brilliance. And, and, and if you just look at his bodies of work and look, look, look what he's done, he in comedy and then he created Disney shows and then he had a late night talk show and then he was just starting to stream and he just, uh, I was by turns, amazed and horrified and then ashamed in seeing his loss because I, uh, you know, it's a terrible, terrible loss to, he was so prolific and the work that he did was so good and there was so much more for him to do. But also I think of that and I think this is a dude who's 13 years younger than me and, uh, and he show ran, created and show ran two shows, uh, was on a sketch show, came right out of college, did that, 
and and it wasn't just he he wasn't just failing up. He was a guy who people wanted to work with because he was fucking great. And and there's pangs of jealousy in there of being not being the guy that want people want to work with or not making myself essential. You know what I mean? It's I, I'm there. There's still that small kernel of narcissism in me that brings it around to me and goes, oh man, this is fucking terrible that he's gone. Uh, and oh man, I I wish I could have been like him. I should have been like him. Why didn't you work? Why weren't you like him? And then you beat yourself up and you hide again on on uh, for you know however fucking long because you don't want to deal with the fact that you're not doing the thing you're supposed to do. And then it just pushes it further and further. And uh, let's not get into more about how my brain runs on a fucking treadmill. But to lose a guy like that, and and this is a guy who on on his forty, I think his fortieth birthday, he put a picture up on Instagram, and he's with, and it's a picture of him holding his son's hand on the beach, and he's saying, you know, I, uh, I'm gonna paraphrase because I don't remember exactly what was said, but I know uh, he said, I'm lucky to have worked and collaborated with the people I've worked with. Uh, I'm lucky to have able to live. I'm to be living the life I'm living. I have a son who's my best friend, a family that I love and loves me. And I'm not usually one for this kind of thing. I don't get personal here. Uh, but God, I'm grateful. And, and, uh, this, I know he said, he said, uh, from this point on, everything's a victory lap. And then a year later, he's gone with a young child and a, and a, I mean, I j- just, does it, when you hear these stories, when I when I hear of, when I see like a Paul or a, or a Chris are gone and we've lost them, and then a Trevor uh, Moore is gone, th- doesn't it make everything else seem small? Doesn't it make going to the to the having to wear a mask to go out to the to the drugstore small? Don't you see that that it's that the human race is bigger than than your problems or or anger or rage or insistence on not being told what to do? I don't understand the smallness and and that's contributed again to me not talking recently. I I don't understand how small segments of the population are. And that goes on both sides. The, the people who, who have made it their life's work to ridicule people who don't wear masks. Those people are also fucking annoying. I mean, I don't... There are so many other things to do. And again, I know that sounds ridiculous coming from a guy who's hiding in his apartment all the time. But I do get to go to the gym and talk to my friends there. And, and Every time I step outside into the sun and I've got my earbuds in and I hear music, it makes me go, you know what, I'm going to do this. And it's a, it's a long fight to beat up my head. It's just It just is. And it's getting worse and he's getting stronger and I'm doing everything I can to fucking fight it off. And I will do what I can to fight it off going forward for all of you, mostly for me, because I can't, I can't be this anymore i you know i i've done these declaratory shows declarative shows whatever you want to call them these flags these line in the sand shows and i'll do it again and i'll backslide again i mean fuck i'm recording this right now it's 6 30 in the fucking morning i'm supposed to be in the gym at 10 and uh so that's another day i'm gonna miss but i'm getting this done all you can do is is get one thing done at a time and, and it took me three weeks to, to scrape this out of my skull, and it won't take another three weeks to get the next one. I hope you're here for the next one. Fuck, I hope you're here for this one. Uh, this is the first show of my death year. You don't want to miss the rest of them, do you? You guys can get me at MikeAndMikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40-year-old boy. I'm at Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat at Mike40YOB. Now, I will tell you this. My Snapchat is on the fritz, which doesn't make any sense at all, but it is. I, I've, I don't know what, the, what to make of it. It loads and loads and loads, and then nothing happens. It's, uh, it, it can't get off. 
Let's put it this way. I don't get a money shot out of my Snapchat anymore. I, I, I get Snapchat, Snapchat. Uh, it's just loading, 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 loading. Anybody who sends me anything, loading. So if you've sent me something on Snapchat, please know I, I you know, I, I'm sure it tells you if I've opened it or not. I haven't opened it because it just says loading, loading, loading. And the little circle keeps spinning no matter what. Like even right now, if I open it, the, the circles are spinning. Uh, perhaps I think the birds are trying to send me a Snapchat because they do everything that turn, 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 right? Um Regardless, Snapchat still exists, and I'm on there. Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok, Mike40YOB. But again, please understand uh, my Snapchat completely on the, it's on the kablooey. As soon as I can figure it out, I'll check out your videos, and I'll, I'll look at you doing your important things uh, that you do when you Snapchat, like when you drive and you film the street or when you eat uh, a sandwich. Uh, so find me at Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok, Mike. Four zero Y O B. Don't pause. Put it all together. I'm yawning now. I don't mean to. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, thanks to our friend KC, who uh, who's caught us up on YouTube. We should be a whole on YouTube. We should be all squared away. Uh, other than this show, which isn't up yet because I'm talking now, but it'll be up eventually. Uh, thanks to KC for stepping up, and thanks to our buddy Ryan who has helped with the website for so long. Uh, I owe Ryan an email. I should probably get one out to him. I owe him a note or a text. Uh, and uh, thank you uh, to our great friend, David Hernandez. Um, as you know, David is, uh, you know, he's the consigliere of this show. And he's had his own tough week because he just sent my godson, his son, his youngest, off to college. He's heading off to the desert to go and uh, make soup in his dorm room and sell it because he's a genius. He's going to make a million dollars his freshman year. Uh, I love him. I'm excited for him. Whatever I just, whatever he's going to bring to this fucking world is going to be the greatest thing. I'm just, I'm it's, uh, but you know what? That's the circle of life. His first year of college happens during my death year. <laughs> um, so David's had a bit of a week himself, but I will say this for David. He is, uh, he, first of all, become his friend at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. If you become his friend, then you get that. And that's the key that unlocks all doors, friends. That's when you can look at any of the cool ass things that he's done. You know, he's done plenty of artwork. He makes memes, mechs, memes, and stuff like that. If you become his friend, you can go into his uh, photos. And I'm sure he's got everything parceled, uh, parceled out by partial parcel, a partial parcel. He's got them in parceled out, parse, parsed out? I don't know, in a uh, in folders. Again, it's very early in the morning, and I have been up. Dude, this week, I, I stayed up 26 hours, slept three. I stayed up 27 hours once. I stayed up 19 hours once. Um because I get mad, you know, because I'm like, do the show, do it. You got to do it. What are you doing? Quit, uh, quit ignoring your work. Uh, but then, you know, but then it's like fucking, then it's 9 a.m. And I'm like, whatever you do now is going to suck. And you're going to yawn all through it. And they're going to be mad at you. Um, I'm very Joe Jackson. They're mad at you. Uh, David Hernandez, again, facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Become his friend at Facebook, then go to his photos, check out all the artwork he does. He does the memes. He does, you know, first of all, join his closed group as well. He's got a closed group uh, <clears throat> called This Is Dumb, That's Dumb, You're Dumb, I'm Dumb. It's all, it's him and his disciples all laughing at religion. And uh, he, he wants you to imagine no religion. Is that a, a lyric? Imagine no religion and no heaven too, right? No, maybe not. Uh, but still, go ahead and join his closed group. This is dumb, that's dumb, you're dumb, I'm dumb. See all the cool-ass stuff that's in there. He creates photos and memes. Uh, he's got those on his on his page as well at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. And also, the man has a podcast. Wait, I know you're thinking to yourself, what are podcasts? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, he's lapped me. He's got a couple of podcasts in the can right now. New ones for you to go ahead and listen to. Uh, because as you know, I've just been, uh, staring, but uh, you, while, while the cat's away, the mice will play and Mex is absolutely the mouse in this relationship. He is in there and he is doing amazing work, putting up new podcasts. It is, uh, the phlegm cat podcast. And that's four words, the phlegm P H L E G M cat uh, C A T podcast, Fle the Flem cat podcast. You can find it wherever your finer podcasts are, are, are dispensed or perused. Go ahead and download it. Listen to him doing music. Listen to him telling you about his eye that got all fucked up. I don't want to give anything away, uh, but he's got a giant bulbous eye now that hangs out of his skull, like a, like a hunchback of Notre Dame situation. So, uh, so check it out. His podcast is available right now. The Flem cat podcast. They're singing, 
Uh, there's singing, there's dancing, most every night. Uh, whoa, 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 baby. I had an extra whoa. Uh, bottoms up. He's uh, He's got all that there for you to check out and peruse all the songs he's doing, all the singing. He's got uh, Flangy Joe. He's got Flangy Joe singing as well. He's one of those crazy characters. He's got The Living Belt. He shows up and he does a couple of songs. <laughs> Dancing Dinner Plate and his friend Cuppy. Oh, they are all these characters run rampant on his show. Please check it out. Uh, the, the Living Belt is one of my favorites. I, I, I the, When I first heard of him, I was like, oh, my goodness, who is this? And he's he's stolen my heart. He's turned himself into a lasso and stolen my heart. Oh, The Living Belt. Uh, the Plum Cat Podcast available now, I think, in Spotify and Audible and wherever you find cool ass podcasts in the Apple podcast space, the iTunes store, whatever they're calling it these days. Go ahead and check it out. Subscribe, if you will, and then download it and listen and you will love it. It's all sorts of amazing, cool ass things. And I'll tell you this, too. Uh, the man does artwork. And I know you're thinking to yourself, well, you just said that. But no, no, I mean, he does artwork, not just memes. Not just nonsense. This man will paint you. He'll paint your friends. He'll paint your sister. He'll paint your girlfriend. He'll paint your mom. That's not a Bon Jovi album, but it's not paint. Um, if you want him to do those things, first of all, like I said, go to his page, facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. Look at the artwork he's done and say to yourself, I want something like that. I want him to do my Facebook caricature. Wouldn't that be cool? I want him to paint a, a painting of my my hedgehog. Uh, my spiky, furry hedgehog. Go ahead and make a, a painting of that so I can hang it in my foyer for all to see. I want him to paint my girlfriend's vagina, but that means I'm going to have to send him a picture of my girlfriend's vagina. Will that be uncomfortable for him? Will it be uncomfortable for his wife? Or will they just say, well, obviously, he's a he's a modern-day Picasso, so go ahead and paint the pink, buddy. Let's do it. Let's get a brush and paint that pink. Fucking give it a good work on a couple of lips, get some labia in there, fucking work the speed bag. Let's fucking get it all in there. Do it. He can do it because he's an artist. So I guess what I'm saying is all of you out there right now, anybody interested, send him pictures of vaginas and he will paint them for you. Now, you got to pay for the privilege of the pink. Certainly, that's no lie. Uh, don't just send him vaginas and go here, paint this for free because he won't do that. He's not you're not his vag vaginal muse. Don't don't be that person. Uh, it, but because you're paying for this and it's going to and it's going to be on prominent pink display in your house. Uh, have I, I've ground this into the ground. I think I have <laughs> ground this in the dust. So what you want to do again, go to facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez and become his friend. Look at the artwork there. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, I like this artwork, but I want to see if he can do something different. Does he do some sort of different artwork? Is there a different, more challenging piece that I could check out? Oh, ho, ho, let me tell you this. You're going to want to go to the man's website. What? In addition to Facebook, he has a website. You're goddamn right. He does. Do you think a guy would put out something called the phlegm cot cat cot? The Flem Jim Cat from the Phillies podcast. If he, if somebody put out the Flem Cat podcast, do you think they wouldn't have a presence on the web? Au contraire, mon frere. You're going to want to go to his website. Uh, it's called, uh, I, I've forgotten it. It's been so long since I've done this show. It's been three weeks. Uh, uh, I, cause in my brain I'm spelling it and I'm like, I'm thinking R S T L N E because I'm thinking of the fucking wheel of fortune. Uh, Oh, R R that's why R art. I've got it now. Of course. Uh, what a fucking buffoon. You go check out his website to see the kind of artwork he can do for you and yours. That's his website art by DMH.com. That's a R T B Y D M H. Dot com. Hey, car shoppers, car gurus here with your word of the day. Confident. You know, that feeling you get when you're about to rock an outfit so killer, it's going to drop jaws worldwide. What if you could get that feeling while shopping for a car? With car gurus, you can. Shop more cars than you'll find on other leading car shopping sites. Find a deal that's really, really great. And see all the details that matter, like mileage, accident history, even days on lot all on car gurus then contact the dealer knowing your stuff and feeling more confident than well ever visit cargurus.com today hi everybody this is todd glass what could i say that would make you want to give the todd glass show a listen well i guess you could poke around on youtube and if some of the stuff over there makes you laugh or my netflix special act happy then maybe you'll give it a listen the only other thing i could do is make it short because it's interrupting a podcast you already love okay i'm done thank you goodbye 
Good times for a change See the gigs I've had Can make a good man turn bad So please, please, please Let me, let me, let me Let me get what I want this time Haven't had a dream in a long time See the life I've had could make a good man bad So for once in my life Let me get what I want Lord knows it would be the first time Lord knows it would be the first time With so many meal kit services out there, it's hard to find the right one for you. Here's what sets Home Chef apart. Home Chef offers delicious meals anyone can cook. They'll recommend meals based on dietary preferences such as calorie conscious or vegetarian. They even offer microwave and oven ready options that save you time and effort in the kitchen. Your box arrives weekly with recipe cards and perfectly portioned ingredients. For a limited time only, go to homechef.com slash art19 for $90 off your first month. That's a value of 10 free meals at homechef.com slash art19 inexplicably we still have sponsors what i mean I, and i'm just talking about those that you just heard the uh, the those guys selling garlic bologna dehydrated garlic bologna for your space trips or whatever the fuck all the all the fine sponsors that we reel in here they're just like oh guys let me ask you something you like backpacks okay now let me ask you this what if there was a backpack you could sleep in not a sleeping bag because it's not the size of a sleeping bag no 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 it is the size of a of a fucking backpack you gotta crawl in it like a yogi well that's who's sponsoring mike schmidt's podcast via the fucking misfit toys corporation uh co-op all right you know i'm gonna actually i'm gonna find this because there was a it was an idea i had once with mex um did i ever read this on here i don't know if i did but all right i'm gonna try to find this while i'm just oh dude while i'm fucking talking to you guys this is not a good idea probably but i'm gonna go ahead and search my computer to see if i can find this uh, seal, uh, no, not seals and crofts. Uh, here we go. This was something I wrote. Uh, it was a, a, uh, um, I, I was pitched max on an idea where we would do like, uh, fake commercials that I, I might've even read this on here already. God, see, this is the issue with doing shows like once every goddamn three weeks. I, it's just foolishness, foolishness. I say, uh, and yet I'm going to read this to you. Uh, I, I wanted to send these scripts out to my friends. You know, like I, when I had like uh, Paul Gamartin and Brian Noonan and those guys go, hi, this is Paul, Maga- Paul Gamartin. And you're listening to the Mike Schmidt 40 year old boy podcast, whatever the fuck. All right. So here's what, uh, here's what I, <laughs> did I read this already on here? I must've, if I didn't, I apologize. And if I did fucking enjoy it again, cause it's worth it. Uh, hi, I'm Mike Schmidt of the 40 year old boy podcast. When I club a baby seal to death, I like to know I'm doing the best job possible. That's why I get all of my seal killing gear from Sammy's dead.com blood aprons, brain mops and custom pearl handled ivory killing clubs made from the tusks of actual ringling brothers, circus elephants. When ordering, be sure to use the code four zero Y O B to receive a baby rattle filled with seal skull splinters. That's Sammy's dead.com. The official sea mammal murdering headquarters of the 40 year old boy. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to do, I thought I wanted to do a bunch of those and I had pitched them to Max. Um, and I don't, I, we just didn't get to them or, or whatever. I don't know why we didn't, we didn't pull the trigger. Uh, cause I wrote that one as just a, as a sample. And then, but I wanted to write like, just like the most 
horrifying products and and script copy you possibly could and uh and i thought of reeling my friends in to do it and uh if i remember right like i, I don't know if max max might not have been interested in it whatever it didn't we didn't pull the trigger on it and then i thought well i'll just do it myself uh and you see where that fucking went i got that script i, I when i just opened that up dust flew out of my laptop that's how long ago i wrote that fucking script uh and i swear to god now for some reason that i read that goddamn thing on here already and i've, I've wasted your time a second time but didn't but didn't you want to hear it I'm sure you did. Aren't you happy you did? No. All right. Um, sponsors, which we do have real sponsors. Uh, our great friend, Fearful Jesuit, is very patient. Uh, he reaches out to me after, you know, three weeks of inactivity. And he's like, you all right out there? Like, what the fuck's going on? Like, what's wrong with you? I mean, he's he's very kind about it. But at the same time, it's just, uh, you know, I, I don't answer. I don't want to answer him because I know I don't have my work done. And I, I know the answer is going to be sorry. You know what I mean? And he's sponsoring. And so then I'm like, you want your money back? And he's like... Dude, I never want my money back. I just want to make sure you're okay. But one of these days, he's going to want his fucking money back. I know he is, and I don't blame him. Anyway, there are two right now episodes of the Paranoid Strain podcast available for your perusal, for your listening pleasure in the Apple podcast space, in the iTunes store, wherever you can get these fantastic podcasts. Go download it. And we are still uh, in part of a larger picture, ladies and gentlemen. It's only a puzzle piece. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Paranoid Strain Secret Society's Part 10 but I can tell you the part 11 is out there already as well. I haven't had a chance to listen, but I'm excited to get the chance. Uh, Paranoid Strain Secret Society is part 10. Again, just part of a larger uh, rubric, a crazy quilt, if you will. Uh, it's only a puzzle piece in his decimation of secret societies. It's, all, it's a mere Jenga log, if you will. It's a, it's a uh, Jenga log of a podcast that you can pull out and hope not to topple the tower. God knows we don't want to topple the tower. We're going to revisit the Holy Blood, guys. Uh, I know that's a good thing. I know you always like doing that. Here's another thing. We get another awesome English voice. Oh, my God. I love an English voice. I love an English voice. God damn it. But I will say this. We get uh, we get some weird pronunciations in this. Uh, you know the word dynasty? Uh, someone says dynasty in this show, which is depressing. Uh, do you know what ducats are? Like, uh, uh, I, I, it's, I don't know if it's like comp tickets or money. I never know, but ducats, D U C A T S. Uh, this guy says ducats might even be, that might even be Dana who says ducats, Danny unicorn. And it threw me off. And, uh, here's another thing. You know, the word cordial, uh, C O R D I A L cordial. Like, uh, we cordially invite you. Someone pronounces it as cordial. So you get dynasty, you get ducats, you get cordial. Uh, and get this, uh, I mentioned it's a secret society show. Uh, you know, the words, uh, you know, the word Templar, uh, that's pronounced as fuck you, Mike, which I was, I could not believe. I was very disappointed because they're talking about the Templars virtually the entire episode. And then you hear fuck you, Mike over and over disappointing, did not see it coming, should have seen it coming quite frankly. Uh, but still it, it did send me reeling quite frankly. Um, but again, like I said, you get another awesome English voice reading things down. Here's, here's the story. They, they start talking about, now, again, this, they start talking about a plan to blackmail the Vatican, which I mean, you couldn't do that now. Right. Cause they just, they just sent out about fucking 18 Cardinals with sharp sticks to fucking stab you in your sleep. The fucking Vatican doesn't fuck around anymore. And back then, I don't know how you could blackmail the Vatican and anything, but these guys are going to try. Uh, and how are they going to blackmail the Vatican? Well, I'm glad you asked because they claimed to have possible proof that the crucifixion was faked. Now, I, I don't know if that proof was Jesus never existed. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that proof was, uh, Hey, this is a bullshit story and we appreciate your big, thick comic book that you're making everybody read, but fuck that. I don't know. I'm not sure, but they somehow, they thought they had possible proof about the crucifixion being faked. Uh, they talk about pilots collusion. Uh, you know, you know, Pontius Pilate, he's, he's that guy. Uh, you hear about the undercurrents of a political ambition. You'll hear a little about, uh, Leo Shidloff and, uh, you'll, yeah, and also the choice of Barabbas. Ooh, ah, the choice of Barabbas. I call him Barabbas because I read it wrong. Uh, the choice of Barabbas is out there. There is also uh, speculation that the tassels on the fringes of these robes that these guys wore uh, were deemed to possess miraculous, uh, miraculous curative powers. Um, they all, and also, they think this is such horseshit. I, I'm sorry. Uh, they were all believed to have had the same birthmark, 
which was a red cross above the heart or between the shoulder blades. Now, just the very fact that there's two separate choices indicates that not all of them had the same birthmark. But uh, but what? But these are the guys who think they're going to fucking black, blackmail the Vatican. What the fuck do I know about them? You know what I mean? I guess I can't judge. Uh, there is continued speculation that Jesus had kids. They discussed the bloodline of Jesus. They mentioned Jesus's marriage license and they mentioned his kids birth certificates. I, I and they also mentioned a very bumpy ride to Wally World that Jesus took with his children only to find out that the park was closed. Oh, it was, it was a bite in the ass. You would think Jesus would have known that he is the king of kings after all. But yet he did not know that the park was closed. And he even said he still pulled up. He still approached the gate. Uh, and he tried to get in and the guard had to tell Jesus and his kids parks closed. Moose out front should have told you Jesus didn't care. He wanted to go whistle zippity doo dah out of his asshole. That's how much fun he wanted to have. Uh, Jesus, his marriage license and his kids birth certificates. I don't now you're just stupid at that point. I've heard these guys. I don't because look, we are. I guess it's OK to say that Jesus had a marriage license because He's not even a dude. He's just a fucking, he's a ghost. He's, he's, he's the Baba Yaga. He's the story they tell kids to get him to behave. He's like, oh, don't make, don't make Krampus and Jesus come and steal you and put you in a burlap sack and take you to Wally World when it's closed. Whoa, you wouldn't like Wally World when it's closed. <laughs> um, there's also a thing about the House of Benjamin. Uh, hold on, there's a plan about to crash into my apartment. Uh, you'll, you hear a thing about the house of Benjamin, which is, uh, I I must be honest. It is not to be confused with the house of Benjamin or, uh, which is where my best friend's girl lives. Uh, oftentimes I get to go over there and stay the night. So you, you should not confuse it with the house of Benjamin or I'm so proud of myself right now. Um, then, and this is, this is look, whether we, we get, we hear about, uh, Barabbas, Barabbas, whatever the fuck, whether we hear about a dynasty or some ducats, whether we talk about pilots collusion, or Jesus' trip to an amusement park. Listen to me, folks. Here is the most important part of the episode. Uh, I could have used a little heads up on this. I'm not going to lie to you. I could have used a warning. I'm listening to the episode. And then he throws it to our great friend, uh, the heretofore unseen and yet certainly speculated upon to be hot, Dana Unicorn. And we hear her have a conversation with her um, husband. I guess would be the word I would choose Uh, because that's the word they use. Her husband, Dana Unicorn has a husband that no one told me about and, and no one was going to break it to me gently. They were just going to thrust me into a conversation between Dana Unicorn and her. uh, What's the word husband? Uh, What's the point in going on? Why would I listen to any more episodes of the show? Why would I, why would I, hang on every single word out of this woman's mouth when I find out that she's got a uh, um, husband. Yeah, that's it, a husband. Uh, and here's the best part. Uh, they're talking. Uh, best part, worst part, you you, you choose. He seems uh, nice and smart, and that that will not do. I, I need him to be a lout. I need, to be, I need him to just be a fucking human ashtray so I can steal her away from him. They have a conversation. There's French involved. Oh, Jesus. It's so it, it's just you, you want to turn your eyes green with envy. Uh, listen to Dana Unicorn and her husband have a conversation in French. I don't understand it. Why would you drop that on me? It doesn't make any sense. It's frightening and disappointing. And uh, will I listen to part 11? Yes, I do. I have a contract, so I will have to listen. Uh, hopefully Dana's husband's not on there unless he's like, Hey, uh, je, je, bonjour, Mike. Uh, I really enjoyed your best friend's, uh, Benjamin Orr joke. That was great. <laughs> uh, joke seems strong, but I enjoyed what I did there. All right. Uh, <laughs> so go listen to the paranoid strain podcast. Part, part 10 is the one I just told you about. Part 11 is out there and I'm, I'm just as excited as you are to hear about that, I'm excited to, to listen my own self. It's out there for you to peruse. And then next week when I do a show, wink, next week when I do a show, we'll talk about part 11. Won't that be grand? I think it will. Hey, you want to hire me to do stuff? Well, first of all, let me tell you, I'm in the Misfit Toys co-op. Uh, it's uh, it's me. It's never not funny. It's Doug Loves Movies. It's the Todd Glass show. It's no fun with Jen Kirkman. It's let me watch your movie with you with Jonah Ray. 
All of these shows are in the Misfit Toys Co-op. I'm proud to be a part of it. Never Not Funny features Jimmy Pardo and Matt Belknap along with the gang. Uh, Doug Loves Movies features Doug Benson and his many guests. Todd Glass Show features Todd Glass. And do you really need anything more than that? You don't. And the Jen Kirkman Show features Jen Kirkman. And you don't need anything more than that either. You got fucking no fun with Jen Kirkman. And that's all you need to know. And that's all you need to listen to because it is fantastic. Jonah Ray's Movie Podcast as well. Please listen to all of these. Misfit Toys Co-op. I'm proud to be a part of it. I hope they'll continue to have me going forward. That would be great. Who wants to hire me? Oh, you know, it's not like uh, it's not like I don't have a lot of free time these days as I sit around in my apartment for three weeks and not record a podcast thinking about all the cameo money I'm going to rake in this fall. Oh, that's right. College football season is upon us. And you want me to tell your friends about how much uh, you Notre Dame blows, don't you? Or do you want me to praise the the Wazoo Cougars? Isn't Washington State the Cougars? I think they are. Do you want me to call your friend who loves the SEC and go, ha ha? Uh, not only is the University of Mississippi going to have a tough football season, but your state is collapsing from COVID and there are no more beds for the, uh, the injured. Yay. Do you want me to do that? R- rub it in people's faces. Uh, happy to do it. Hire me on Cameo. It's bookcameo.com or you get the Cameo app on your phone and you scroll through all the famous and important people who would do a better job than me. And then you find me cowering in a corner for 20 bucks, 20 bucks. I get 15 of that. That's fucking amazing, right? Just fucking rope me in. Happy to do it. Whatever you want me to do. I need $15 just like anybody else in the goddamn world. Uh, if you want to send us some cash, and again, isn't it nice to do three weeks off and then come back and ask for cash? I'm a fucking stroke. But if you go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com, up in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see a Donate Horn Boy. Click on that. You can send me a PayPal one-time shot or sign up for a monthly PayPal deal. That'd be cool. Uh, and also I got a Patreon, patreon.com slash Mike 40 YLB. And let me tell you this, if I wasn't doing the podcast for three weeks, how much Patreon stuff do you think I did? Oh God, I'm great. Don't fucking yell at me. I, I will, I will fix it. If I got to put a goddamn egg beater into my fucking head and twist it, I'll do it. I'll fucking, <sighs> fucking scramble my brain and get rolling. Uh, patreon.com slash Mike four zero Y O B our great friend kilt bill in Guito. Our great friend kilt bill is a new Patreon subscriber. Thank you, bill. Look at that. Even, even in my, in my hour of need, if I could do a little Dave Mustaine for you, uh, even in the bleakest times, even in the darkest moments, uh, kilt bill is there to reach out and give me a hand up on Patreon. Thank you, Bill. I love you. You're the best. Thank you so much for thinking of me. Uh, Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. Go ahead. Sign me up. Sign you up. Don't sign me up. I'm not going to give to myself. I don't even like me. Uh, <laughs> I've got channels you can subscribe to as well. Yeah, that's right. Fuck you. Think, you think all I got is this? No, bullshit. I got a ton of stuff. I've got a, uh, I got a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy. And as I've mentioned, it is completely up to date. You know why? Cause it's in Kansas city and everything's up to date in Kansas city. Uh, go ahead and check out all the videos on there. And by all of them, I mean, basically there's like seven videos and then there's some clips of Twitch. And then more importantly, there's uh, all of these podcasts, all of the archives, all of the stuff from when I was funny, when we were fab, all the stuff from when I was fab. When we were fab, I don't know how that goes, but was it yawning fuck? That was the name of the song though, right? When we were fab, that bad Beatles song, when they came back and they made, they were like, Hey, let's write a funeral dirge. It's fucking awful. Uh, it's like that. They didn't, they, they did. What was the other one too? They did when we was fab, but there was some other song and it just, it just sounded so fucking off. I I'd rather hear the tune from one of those wind up Jack and boxes. You know what I mean? Or wind them. I was gonna say wind them up Jack in the box. And then I was going to say, wind up, jack them in the box. And I couldn't say anything there. So, uh, again, please recognize it's 7 a.m. Um, <laughs> YouTube.com slash the 40-year-old boy is out there. Go ahead and subscribe to it. That would be great. And also, I'm on Twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. And I'm broadcasting there virtually all the time. Now, I didn't yesterday or <laughs> Wednesday. But today's Friday, and I'll be there at 4 o'clock p.m. today. And then I'll be back on Monday. There's a schedule that goes up on Sunday. Uh, come and play marbles with us. Don't you want to play marbles with us? It's so easy. It's so easy, easy when everybody's trying to please me, baby. Come play marbles, marbles. It's so easy when nothing seems to please me. All right, I got to stop. Um... Marbles is a fun game. doesn't take any skill. You just literally type the, the exclamation point in the word play, and you got a marble in the race. And then I do play-by-play. Play. Doesn't that sound grand? Don't you, don't you want to come and watch more of me shouting at fake marbles? 
Oh, it's the best. Our friend Heather brings her banana. Our friend Scott brings a coffin sometimes. Our friend Christy has a peppermint marble as well. It's it's quite the collection of people. So if you come and visit us at twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy, we do marbles. We do uh, other games. I did a Batman puzzle game. I did... Uh, I'm going to be doing this game called Disco Elysium, which I hear is really amazing. I've got to grab it. I don't know whether I'm going to get it on Steam or if I'm going to get it on PS4 uh, because I don't know what's better because I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? This is devolving. All right. Snap out of it, Mike. Twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. Follow and subscribe to the channel as well. If you follow, that's free. That's just you following to know when I'm always there. But if you subscribe, look at this. You can actually use Jeff Bezos's huge fortune against him and subscribe through Amazon Prime, which will give me five bucks. What? That's right. Gives me five Amazon bucks. Well, not Amazon bucks. It's real bucks uh, until fucking they come along and roll that up because they got to pay for another rocket because fuckheads in space. Jesus Christ. What are you doing? You fucking goof. Literally, you build a company that'll bring me mayonnaise in a day and that somehow they put them in space. What a country. Jesus fuck. <laughs> Literally. And again, I love Amazon. I, lo- I love sitting in my house and going beep, pop, boop. And then the next day, aluminum foil shows up. Yay. Sometimes you just need a spatula at four o'clock in the afternoon. Do it. Um, and I, But I know that they they're killing the workers at the fucking belts and they're making them piss in bottles and shit like that. But God damn it. I need a book. <laughs> I don't have enough books. Somebody put a book in a box and sent it to me. Uh, call your boss. He's at the fuck. He's an Alpha Centauri. <laughs> I ordered a book from fucking Amazon. I wanted to return it. And they said, well, I'm sorry. Our boss is an Alpha Centauri right now. Our, our boss is in the Milky Way. We couldn't possibly uh, handle this. He'll be back in a couple of days, though. Oh, good. We'll get back to me when he does show up. That fuck. I'm sure he's great. He's lovely. Um, so, again, let's just touch base and let's just say thank you for, for being friends. Thank you for being my friends. And uh, and I'll be better going forward. I'll do my best to be as, as good as I can possibly be. Uh, like I said, George is like, hey, what about your crippling anxiety? And it's 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 weird to have somebody address it in that way. I don't know if I have crippling anxiety. I know I know I get fucking in my head sometimes, but like but see a guy verbalize it like that. It's got to be so weird when your whole fucking your whole mental state's being speculated on by everybody. Like, fucking, dude, all right, look, let's talk about this for just a second, and I apologize, but um, we talked about Britney Spears a couple of weeks ago and how Britney Spears had her dad was like her conservator, and he had her, They had. I said he had her pussy on lockdown because he literally did. Like, she wasn't allowed to have any kids or whatever the fuck. So they had her pussy on lockdown, and I was outraged. Now, this is fucking awful. Turn her loose, old man. Go love her boy and turn her loose. Um, but then... Uh, because this happened, all right, I'm following the stories and there's podcasts about Britney and Twitter. Everybody's got their flags. They're flying, you know, free Britney. And, and this is all fantastic. And I feel the same way. Let this poor woman go to live her life. Right. Yes. Uh, and I, I just still couldn't believe that her vagina was on lockdown. It was crazy. So I followed her on Instagram after doing that show. I was like, all right, well, people are making a big deal out of it. So let me check out her Instagram. Now, I will tell you this. Uh. I'm curious about the story like all of you. And is it weird for a 54 year old man to be following this person? I mean, but she's 36 now or whatever the fuck. So I'm fine. I don't feel so bad. It's not like I'm peering in on a teenager or anything like that. Um, But I have been watching her videos and I've been seeing her post. Uh, Brittany is very active on Instagram or has been in in the last couple of weeks when I've been following. Uh, And uh, and here's my question to all of you. Um, All of you free Brittany enthusiasts or anyone with any knowledge or an opinion. Let me ask you this. Here's my question. Uh, is there a chance we're all wrong and, and, and she actually needs a conservator in her life? Because I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm watching these posts and, uh, I, I hear her talk and she says things and look, I understand that she's not a girl, not yet a woman and she's got kids and she's got money, but Jesus fucking Christ, you look at these clips and and she sounds like a 13 year old. I mean, even the way she's writing, she has this manic episode. She's dancing in her fucking house. She said she'd do these things like she's she's she dancing in her yard. And and it very much, you know what it looked like? It looked like, look, look at me, mom. Look at me, mom. Look at me, mom. Look at me, mom. And then she's looking at her Facebook and she's dancing again. And then she'll write a bunch of batshit crazy captions. It's it's kind of insane. And, and uh, you know, I look, give her back her pussy. Certainly let her control that. But maybe 
maybe we don't give the 13 year old who wants to eat ice cream for dinner every night the keys to the bank account and i'm i'm saying this with love i want her to be fine but uh but after i started following the story a little bit and watched her on and look maybe it was for effect maybe she was like watch me be a banana head so i can get out of this fucking relationship i got with my dad i don't fucking know and again i'm an old man this is my death year what the fuck do i know about anybody in their life but she's got a mansion and she's in the backyard topless and she's dancing and then she's like posing in bikinis and she's like what kind of potato chips do i like well you know what people ask me and i like a lace potato chip and then everybody's like oh this was an ironic commentary about the conservatorship she wanted to pretend that she was going to answer questions but i'm like i there's i don't think i don't think that girl's got an ironic bone in her body uh i i i, I think i think she is someone who got rich as a young person and has since the age of 13 not had to touch real life once like hasn't had to experience any sort of real fucking world consequence you know she shaved her head she fucking beat up a paparazzi car with an umbrella she went fucking bananas she got tricked into showing her pussy to everybody by fucking paris hilton and, and Lindsay lohan when she went out of I'm Alex Schieffer. And I'm Christine Schieffer. And we're siblings who host the comedy podcast, Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet. On our show, we do dramatic readings of one-star reviews written by real people with not-so-real problems. Whether it's a bar's no-throw-up policy, a nude beach with too much nudity, or a school psychologist's fashion sense, reviewers complain about it all. Each week, we cover a new topic, such as strip clubs in Vegas, ghost tours in New Orleans, or DMVs in Phoenix. We nobly delve into the cesspools of Yelp, TripAdvisor, and other review sites to find you the best of the worst. Check out Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 